Hello, Mysterious Person behind the screen, and welcome back to our ongoing series of Spider-Man audio commentaries. I'm once again joined by Isaac. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> uh, and this is the, the final of the Raimi series, the, the ever-controversial Spider-Man 3. Uh, we're doing the theatrical cut of Spider-Man 3 for this commentary. So, without further ado... If you'd like to sync this up with the theatrical cut of Spider-Man 3 on Blu-ray, uh, put the film to the start and press play in 3, 2, 1, go. Now, I do have um, very clear memories of seeing this in the cinema, but kind of for the wrong reasons. Oh, okay. Do tell. Yeah. Well, me and my family, we booked to see it... Um, but we went for a meal first because the cine like the cinema we're, we're at, um, it's got like a lot of restaurants inside as well. We went for a meal first, had a had our lunch, about to go in, and uh, the set like person at the ticket hold said, "Oh, you can just go in now. It's about to start." Thanks, but we were sat right at the front. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, yeah, and honestly, yeah, I was a bit. I'm a bit. When I was young, I was quite noise sensitive, so being at the front and a big action film like yeah, this is yeah. definitely not the best. It, it's so weird. It's when you're in a theatre, you want to be at the front, but when you're in the cinema, you always go for the back seats. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, so yeah. Weird to me. So you must have had then Tobey Maguire's thrusting. <laughs> In, in in full uh, full oh, all, yeah. all encompassing <laughs> yeah. view. Um, God, that must have been an experience. Yeah, no, I um, my first memory of seeing this was on DVD when uh, soon after it came out, and uh, yeah. I seem to remember being. I mean, for one thing, I was really this opening title sequence creeped me out because um, it was I I was so used to it from the previous two films that suddenly having this aggressive like symbiote theme coming into it and and the sandman theme it kind of like scared me in a way because it was so like ominous um so that's a big See what, yeah. uh, especially in a minute when everything sort of it, it gets taken over by the symbiote and i still think this is a really cool opening sequence yeah but it amazes me that they tend to use a lot of footage from the first film but not 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 as much as from the second one i was gonna say the same thing yeah there's not much to uh there's not much of the second one at all. And of course, yeah, the score is done by Christopher Young this time, and um, yeah, it's really good. It's I it does so. remind me of like um, what they did on the Superman sequels, where Ken Fawn, I think, you know, makes his own theme, yeah. but obviously adapts John Williams's theme, and I think he's done Christopher Young has done a similar job here with uh, Danny Elfman's music. Absolutely, it's my favourite score of the three. I think. Uh, taken as a whole i think it's it's my favorite of the three and i wish it would get a proper release because it's never been released officially that's true yeah because i think danny elfman um because it uses bits of his score he has to sign off on it and he won't sign off on it or something so that's why uh. it's, it's never been released which is such a mm. shame <laughs> Oh, I forget Sam Raimi did contribute to the screenplay. <laughs> Among many other people who are uncredited, yeah. Um, that, yeah. That's why this is so... Especially this first act is such a mess. Um, yeah. Especially and comparing it to... It, 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 it's worse when you watch it so soon after Spider-Man 2, I think, because Spider-Man 2 yeah. is... That, that first act is paced so perfectly. And you get to this and it's so... Something feels so choppy. Much. And here, again, there's kind of too much origin, I'd say, because we've got mm. New Goblin, Venom, Sandman, Gwen Stacy as well. You've got, again, wow. the... Op yeah, even on first viewing, when I was nine, I remember liking it just as much as the other two, but I thought, it was a bit overstuffed, wasn't it? You know? Mm. And it I is. did walk out of theatre thinking that, and... Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, most definitely it is, and I think even... I Because I... Cause I you know, saying it up front, I do really like the film overall. I've I've grown to appreciate it a lot over time, but even so, like I think this first montage especially is so sort of like they're cramming in so much and trying to introduce so much and that that really comes to a head later when we get 
Harry getting amnesia, which is so um, yeah. so it's such a thinly veiled attempt to get him out the way, so they can focus on setting other things up. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did go through a phase where I didn't like this film, but uh, hence why I put off buying it on Blu-ray for so many years. Mm. But um, you know, for me, it's just. All right, because Empire Magazine, they put this as the 50th worst movie ever made. Like, no, come on. Yeah, ex- it's, it's not, not that bad. <laughs> um, it, even in, even at, at the time they did that list, it is it's far worse out there. Oh, yeah. On, oh, honestly. And, and I still... It's one of those things where... Because I said it at the end of the last commentary. This um, this is a first for us where we have sort of differing opinions on something because usually we, we tend to be yeah. on the same page. So uh, this commentary is kind of the first one where we're... I wouldn't say divided, but I, I certainly... <laughs> I, I would say like this a lot more than you do. Um, yeah. So it's, I mean, I'd say... Yeah. Um, now, I'd say him mouthing along to the singing is dorky, but... I've just been back to the theatre <laughs> seeing Joseph. So many people were singing along to it, so nah, it ain't dorky. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's understandable, and it sets up something that I have grown to really like over the years. And that's how I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like how this film takes the lovable character from the first two and turns him into a bit of a dick. Um. um... I'm kind of mixed on it because okay. on the one hand I do think it is a good arc for Peter to go through mm. because throughout his whole life he's been kicked around spat on no one cares about him but now here and like I said last time it is the inverse to the second film where yeah. Peter is on top of the world he's got everything that he's in love with the girl of his dreams he's perfectly balancing his life with Peter Parker and Spider-Man and yeah it does make sense he'd feel pride but mm. I, for me, it just feels like a step backwards in maturity because P- Spider-Man's entire arc is about a boy becoming a man, essentially, just with spider powers. And, yeah, um, sure. Yeah, for me, it just feels like a step backwards because I feel like at the end of the first and second film, you felt like he was moving on. But here, you know, um, and kind of go- goes the same for MJ as well. You know, she keeps secrets from Peter. He mm. does kind of the same thing and um he just expects everything to go his way when yeah he's he's gone through two films where he learns that that's not how life works and i think sam gavin put it best in his review he feels like that dork who in school that no one's friends with yet he's going out with the hottest girl in school (laughs) yeah that (laughs) that's a good point actually i mean i think i sort of see it like because I've always thought Spider-Man was, like you say, about real real people going through real issues just with superpowers. And I think in that respect, you know, people do in life, when they achieve success, sometimes it does go to their head and they sort of start unintentionally um, pushing people away and and becoming so full of themselves that that they don't see what's right in front of them. And I think this... It, I think I I like the, I like the direction it goes down, and I think it, it at the end when it taps into that arc of forgiving himself and um, seeing that the world isn't so black and white. I think it, it w- when it comes round to the resolution, I think it pays off for me. Yeah, because um, even when I was younger, I was quite confused when you know he says to me, "I'm going to ask MG to marry me." I was like. But how long have you been going out? What, yeah. a couple of months? And yeah. um, I think that is kind of the point. He's Because I think Aunt May does ask him, you have to be ready, are you? And he's like, yeah. And yeah. then he cuts, a, he cuts the unusual suspect slide detector blood and then realise that that's kind of the point. He's not ready. Exactly. Like he, and he's so sure that everything's going to go his way. He's so 100% sure that nothing will go wrong because he's... Yeah, it, as far as he's concerned, he's a hundred percent in the right with everything he does, and he doesn't. At this point in his life, he doesn't see that there are greys in this world. But again, I felt he kind of learnt that in Spider-Man too. He felt that 
it will always be complicated, but he can work through it. So mm. to, have, to have him go back and just be like, oh, the world's so easy, isn't it? Just, again, it just feels like a step backwards. That is a good point, least. actually. No, that is a good point. I, I yeah, I do agree with that, yeah. I, 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 like I said, I think for me, when it gets to the resolution, it pays off. But I do agree that in some ways, yeah, I do think it is a step backwards, especially with... And that's what I mean, when you watch I de- this film take it on its own uh, and I think the problems aren't as pronounced but I think when you watch it so close to the other two Uh, yeah I think maybe that's why the reaction was a lot more mixed this time around because of maybe because of the high standard of Spider-Man 2 the Mm. Yeah, because, again, Sam Raimi, um, just from hearing him in interviews, he he feels like he's that sort of director who always wants to top his last film. Yeah. And it, it obviously it's part of the reason why he left Spider-Man 4, because he didn't want to make another film that he felt was just subpar or okay. He wanted to top the last film. Mm. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, that that whole thing of, I think he said since that, them trying to top themselves was the was one of the mistakes on this yeah because it, and, and the pressure it, he's spoken again since the pressure on them was unreal because of the wild success of spider-man 2 and at this point i think it you know the spider-man series was the most successful of all the comic book adaptations out there at the time mm-hmm, and so the, yeah. pre- the pressure on the filmmakers to deliver combined with sony breathing down their necks and and all that and it just yeah that's why we have what we have and just going back to watching the film now we've just this is like the third scene in a row where we get an origin because yeah. we see harry take the performance enhancing drugs we see the sim- the symbiote fall from the scar yeah just an explanation yeah and now we've got flint marco coming in and i'd argue thomas hayden church is probably perfect as flint marco it's just oh it's brilliant yeah, I don't, I don't like this sympathetic portrayal. It's just it sounds a bit horrible, but again, I just think it complicates things because um, when we get to him, he says like, "I want to kill the spider. You want to kill the spider." Well, when did he want Spider Man dead? I thought he was doing this obviously to steal money for his sick daughter. Where did that come from? Well, that's actually. It's, I was going to mention that later, actually, but it's that was um, that's a sign that stuff was cut. I think. Because in oh, the yeah. um, in the editor's cut, they do insert a scene where he goes to, uh, like his daughter and and the mother are like playing at a park, and uh, Sandman make, turns himself into a sandcastle to kind of see his daughter, and kind of connect with yeah. her. And at the end of that scene, they walk off, and he turns back into his normal form, and he goes, "I promise you, he he, I won't let him stop me again." So oh, okay. I think mm-hmm. that scene plus what we know that there were there were other stuff shot as well that we have pictures of but no footage i think there's more there's a lot cut out there and um apparently the early rough cuts of the film were running at like over three hours or something and sony were like cut it down to 220 220 is the yeah. max you can go and um there are whole characters like adrian lester was in this film as a fairly substantial supporting character that just got cut out entirely Oh wow! He he was, he was like a, a doctor that Flint Marco goes to see and threatens, and then he comes back in the final battle, and he's oh, okay. no no trace of it in the finished film, whatever. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad. And again, things getting cut out. Um, this is the only scene where his wife and daughter appear. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I think that scene that that is in the editor's cut should be in this version. I don't know why it was cut. Yeah, personally, I'd have cut Sandman out because he just feels the most you know, distant from the story. And mm. just making him Uncle Ben's killer, again, it feels like a step backwards. It was such an important... It was an important part of the second film where Peter does reject Uncle Ben's message and have a life of his own, yeah. but obviously learns that he can still be Spider-Man. And to just go back and... And more or less, they just kind of say, oh, so it wasn't Peter's fault that Uncle Ben died. It was just a simple accident. Mm. Just feels, just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. Do you think that whole thing, um, that everything that comes with Flint Marker, do you think that all would have worked if we hadn't had the element of the black suit and Venom in this? Like if it was just, um, if it was 
<laughs> just Peter and Flint Marco in a way. Oh yeah, definitely because yeah, because as a villain, he's because I think Sandman would be a good villain to bring to life. It's just mm. um, yeah, it's just they. I feel with quite a few Spider-Man films, they try and overcomplicate the villains when, yeah. when you get down to it in the comics, they're just average thugs, like Peter, who's an average boy, who gets superpowers, and they don't really want to conquer New York or yeah. take over the world or anything. They just want to... They just use the powers to their advantage and steal money or just be twice. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, that's another thing. Like In the comics, you often have like issues where a villain will appear at the start of the issue just rob, yeah. robbing a bank or something and Spider-Man will take him in so easily and then that'll lead into something else and you can't really do that on film because yeah. you kind of a film has to have a central villain and a blockbuster film has to, has to have this big spectacle of a central villain right so I yeah it's that one element and again maybe I've said it before I think Spider-Man would work better as like a long running TV series because you, yeah. you could do stuff like that then Mm-hmm. But I think come back to Sandman. I think he's the most out of everything in this film. He's the he's the one that feels like the most like a classic Raimi Spider-Man villain. Yeah. Um, because he's very very similar setup again to Goblin and Doc Ock. He's he's yeah. the one that feels most in line with the with the other two. Whereas I think the others in this feel very not well. Venom is shoehorned in, obviously, but I think that, yeah, More personal. Yeah, yeah, Special. exactly. And we've just talked over it, but I'd just like to say, I really don't like that Aunt May scene because Peter has <laughs> nothing to say. It'd be like me, uh, just the way she describes every tiny little detail. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> Should I, I tell you how I go to work? I open the front door, I then lock the door to my house, I then open the car door, put my stuff inside, put the car, put the key into the ignition, and then put the car into gear and drive off down the road. You see how annoying that is? <laughs> Honestly, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, just... I will just, to be fair, I will listen to Rosemary Harris read me the phone book. Um, <laughs> so in that regard, I don't mind it, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and we've got it coming up. I'm not a fan of the new goblin suit. Again, I know it's a classic it's weird. thing to say, but he looks like a snowboarder. Yeah. Also, w- why yeah. hasn't he turned? Why hasn't he turned crazy like his dad? Well, again, that's again, it's due to the overstuffed nature of it. He can't really don't really have time to explain that. Yeah. Um, again, if it was in a film with less going on, they probably would have had time to explain. It's in my head. Yeah. In my head, it's that he's been working on perfecting the formula that his dad never got to do. But that's oh, okay. just that's just me inferring it. You know, there's there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing in there that supports. Yeah, it. exactly. That's just and what also, I'm assuming. Um, but I do like uh, the fight scenes between Harry and Peter because it doesn't feel like Spider-Man and New Goblin fighting. It feels like Harry and Peter Parker fighting. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I think I, I the action scenes in this. Are, you know, they went into it with the intention of topping themselves, and I think they mostly succeeded because the action in this is pretty yeah. spectacular. But I do like how every villain, um, you know, every fight scene with each villain is different. Mm. It's not just the same. Yes, I, I like the. Um, I do. I think I do like this fight a lot, especially like later on when he, the razor bats come out and we get the whole. God, I hate these things, and and that's that's all yeah, fun. Just the night. That's a nice call. It's it's a fun fight. It is a really fun fight. But I, again, it, you know, I remember at the time the new Goblin was so heavy in the promotion, um, and I he just gets sidelined so quickly because there's no time. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I love this. It's and I like how it's a bit the fight choreography is kind of uncoordinated because that's what it feels like Like he's not there to um, yeah knock him out he's there to fucking kill him it's great (laughs) yeah Yeah, this whole sequence is great and it's something this whole trilogy has been building up to to a confrontation between Peter and Harry and uh, every every time they fight him it's great he just shot Harry in the face with web. Yeah. Shouldn't he have gone? Ow! Oh, <laughs> 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 
that ring's gone. There's no way. <laughs> I don't mind it because these films, are, these films have never been realistic. But yeah, that's gone. <laughs> James Franco is is having a great time in this film. He he's very he's, yeah. He finally gets to be the villain, but then he's, he just gets knocked down. Well, he's clearly high throughout the majority of it, um, but yeah. I think you can see he's having a great he time. Yeah. <laughs> Hit my head. Hit my I? head. <laughs> They're the best friends I ever had. There's there's an there's an edit later on which I always find hilarious. It's when he's um getting all of his memories back, and we get that a uh, condensed version of the hospital scene. And it and it's the uh, my father he died right, and it cuts to Peter going yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, actually, I, I I see a lot of people going um, with regards to this film. Oh, you know, the first half is is classic Raimi Spider. The first half is great, and the second half shits the bed. I'm of the opposite opinion. Like, I think the first half is where the film's at its weakest. Funnily enough, I just think um, for me, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, out the film, you know. Yeah, I did. the the second half is where I think it settles down. I think that's the thing. After it gets all the introductions out of the way, it's it's. Well, I think that's better. because the reason it settles down is because they just they just throw villains out just so they can focus on. Other yeah, ones. well, and that's true. Yeah, again, it's just a very sloppy structure. It is, yeah. Batman Returns had three villains, and that that handled it very well. That's and true, again, yeah. Avengers in. Avengers Infinity War had what 18, 20 characters mm. that all needed screen time and again it never felt incoherent or none of them had to be pushed to the side I do, I, honestly I do I just want to see the, the deleted footage that they that they shot because there's a lot like I said there's so there's evidence of stuff being shot that would have helped it like would have genuinely helped it not feel so rushed like scenes that where everything just pauses and takes a breather and t- takes time to develop stuff, you know, that are, <laughs> that are, that are unreleased and we we have nothing of them and it sucks. Yeah. Um. So why give him? Am- why give Harry amnesia? What is the point? Just it's, well, it's just to, like yeah, you say to get I him mean, out of the way, isn't it? It's, it's... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Apart from that, but again, you know. Start the film with that um, scene that comes later where Norman says, First we attack his heart. Maybe just have him, you know, slowly but surely attack Peter, you know, yeah. steal MJ from him. Maybe turn the press against Spider Man or something like that. Yeah. Then go in for the kill, something like that, yeah. I, th- I mean, I do like. I mean, it's something that I really like about the amnesia thing is when we get the old. Uh when they walk away from the hospital and Peter's smile uh, like, is so almost horrific because <laughs> you just because you, you just sort of like you realise sort of, wow dude you're smiling at the fact your best friend can't remember the last year because he <laughs> thinks that'll work out for him and again it just adds to this whole thing that this is Peter at his lowest point mor- yeah. morally because um, yeah. he's just like wow this could work out for me the fact that I, I you like, know um, I'm, I'm free from any responsibility of that you know it's a, bit like, it's a bit like on Family Guy when Stewie gets a head injury and is knocked out hey I just found out it's November what the fuck happened <laughs> <laughs> I mean and that's the thing about a lot of the ideas in this film they it's one of the things if you told me the idea and take, I'm taking these ideas I don't like them but a lot of what this film what it leads to is stuff I really like. Yeah. Is is stuff I really like and kind of makes it worth it for me personally. Um, yeah, because yeah. Um, I mean, it is trying to be a f- film that says um, you know uh, go towards forgiveness over revenge, and that's yeah. a good. It's a good starting point for a Spider-Man film, and I'd argue Captain America: Civil War does that with flying colors. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, the, Civil War and this, they remind me a lot of each other in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Specifically, with that we have the main hero or heroes in Civil War losing themselves and mm. finding themselves again by the end. And I think that's why th- these two remind me of each other. 
I do like this how we go inside his oh, body. Oh, it's very cool. Very <laughs> cool. How his, how his structure changes. Visually, Sandman is incredible, and I don't think anyone can can uh, can argue with that. Funnily enough, when he comes to life later on, it reminds me a bit of a Pixar short. Oh, like you'd yeah. see where you go see a Pixar film, you do get a short and. Beautiful. It just reminds me so much of that, where there's no dialogue or sound or anything. It's just all the visuals coming to life. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I can stick it on, like, um, yeah. all, like divorced from the film. I can just look it up, and it just is such a. It, it holds up so well, even what's what we know, fourteen, fifteen years out from this film. It just it holds up. Yeah. And I love the music here as well. <laughs> God, the score's so good. Yeah, and funnily enough. Um, there was that uh, reality TV show program called Any Dream Will Do, where they were looking for a Joseph for the West End, and every oh, yeah. week they had to do they had to do missions, you know, to show them what life could be like as a West End star. And actually, one of their missions was actually to attend the premiere of Spider Man Three. Oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's, there's fair pictures, enough. Like, there's pictures of all of them, and they're not dressed in suits. They're in their coloured coats. You know, just all wa- all around the Leicester Square, I think, for the Spider-Man Three premiere. It's really oh, awesome. Wow. I might have to have a look at that after this. I remember that show. I remember um, yeah. Harry Hill used to take the piss out of it a lot on TV. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. I mean, it's it's bizarre for me now because um, one of the finalists, he came fifth. I saw him as Joseph on a tour because they did a UK tour back in 2008 or something. Yeah. And looked looked up to where they all are now. He's now a porn star. Oh Christ! I'm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> yeah. So so this track so the score here when he goes into the hospital room that is a cut and pasted track from Spider Man Two when he's at the phone. And oh, okay. often, when you hear those cut and pasted tracks, since uh, the editor's cut came out and they did a new sign mix for it, restored Christopher Young's entire score, that's an indicator where where a, a point where Christopher Young's score has been rejected by the producers or whoever it was who wanted it to remain more in line uh, with uh, with the other two. And so, uh, if you if anyone has the 4K release of this, it comes with a, an alternate sign mix where you can hear the original score as it was intended. And uh, mm. you get a lot of Christopher Young's own work. And what he did on this film was really beautiful when you hear it in full. Like, he created this beautiful theme for um, Peter and MJ that uh, just isn't in um, the released film. And it's such a shame, because it, it's uh, really tragic, and it just sums up where they are with each other throughout the course <laughs> of this film really well. Yeah. Oh wow, so subtle! I I'd know. give my life for it. Then. Yeah, I, I'd cut that my to be best honest. Friends, and yeah, that smirk he just did when you know he's realised yes. that Harry's lost his memory. It's, it's kind of malicious. It's like, oh thank fuck, I ain't got to deal with that anymore. I know, yeah, and I love all that stuff. Like when you listen to the commentary track for this, I know, and uh, Sam Raimi's saying like, yeah, we really try to push the bad parts of Peter's character to the max in this and you know yeah some people uh, won't like it uh, and some people don't like it you know but I I'm sort of like they have the balls to just push it as far as they can even to the point later where he hits MJ and that is well what we ballsy. need is um yeah but uh, instead of dancing what he should have done was um move the leaning tower of Pisa <laughs> so it doesn't lean and uh, blow out Olympic torches. Oh yeah, and just straight and, uh, get drunk in a bar. He... Yeah, doesn't he have? Doesn't Superman have sex with a woman on top of the Statue <laughs> of Liberty? He like goes up there and then <laughs> sure yeah seduces her and brings they, they her just, back. They, they just imply that he that he just bonks her. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope Come on, let's relax a little. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you don't uh, expect me to save you because I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, in that bell tower scene when he's taking off the symbiote, he should have been like, um, yeah, should have uh, had the black suited Spider Man, the dorky Peter Parker. You always wanted a swing, P- Parker. That was your chance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Oh, it's this, incredible. The origin of the Sandman. The, the CGI does hold up about 14 years later. It's, it's it, pretty good. It's astounding. It really is. It, it is 
such an achievement, and like you can totally see why for a while this was the most expensive film ever made. Because um, this oh, yeah, CGI it is, it, it looks expensive. And, it, and I think up until Far From Home, this was the highest grossing Spider-Man film. I believe so. Yeah, because this is the thing, right? Everyone always says um, this. This. Uh, was critically panned and bombed at the box office. It was a ro- it was a so unsuccessful. <laughs> it really wasn't. It was still a massive success, and it wasn't critically panned. Yeah, exactly. It was just mixed critically. Um, yeah, the reaction was more mixed, I'd say, yeah, than anything else. It wasn't. Yeah, anything that's not anything that's not a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That means the critics hated it. <laughs> yeah, and that's into, there's the whole reputation surrounding this film has gone through peaks and troughs over the years like because i think when it came out it was like you say the reaction was kind of mixed then over the years when the amazing spider-man films came out everyone was like oh spider-man 3 was shit you know it was the worst film ever and now recently it's garnered more of a resurgence in popularity i think and now i think we're back to where it was 14 years ago where it's just kind of mixed now i did I did once say, Love and Monsters of Spider-Man 3 are quite similar. They were they, <laughs> they were said to be um, terrible <laughs> when they first came out, but now they're seen as masterpieces, probably because of all the memes. Most likely, yeah. I mean, this is yeah. the thing, right? This whole film, um, I can see, so, uh, you know, its flaws, and there's so many of them, but it's also one of those things where I can spend an awful lot of time talking about the stuff I love in it. So it's kind of just balances out. Yeah. And it's one of those I do like where... this scene between Peter and MJ, but... Yeah. Yeah, because I do like a line, these words, it's like my father wrote them. Mm. It, it does feel like something someone would say in a relationship, but also... But um, I feel like MJ's not being entirely fair because he is trying to help. He is saying, you are going to get criticism, you've just got to get back on the horse. I've always <laughs> and, thought uh, that, yeah. Yeah, but um, but he's still he's still at the same time bringing it back to him. Like he's like, oh, I get it all the time, you know. Yeah. Because um, again, he's just mentioning Spider Man. Exactly. It's not. Um... Mm. Yeah, he's saying like I see people all the time wearing Spider Man shirts and telling yeah. me how awesome I am. You suck, MJ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this whole thing as well, where he says he he hears the police scanner. And he smiles and goes, go get him, Tiger. You know, and it's just like, he's he's so oblivious to the fact that, yeah. you know, she's feeling lonely. I, You know, because of Spider-Man, she probably doesn't expect you to stay, but you could you could just say, look, sorry, I really got to go. Yeah. Just know that mm-hmm. I, I love you or something. But he's not, he's like, oh, I, go get him, Tiger. You know, like, and it's just like, damn, Peter, you are... And again, he thought... <laughs> He fought life and limb to be with MJ in the mm. first two films. He's taken it for granted. Again, yeah, again, after such a short amount of time, he just feels like he's taking it all for granted. And, mm. yeah, it just seems really immature. Yeah. Again, a step... For me, it's just a step backwards. And, um... Okay. That's just my opinion. Yeah, no, I think I... People like it, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, that, there's a video as well. I've not seen it, but... Shafrilas, Chef, is that how you say it? <laughs> oh, Shafrilas, yeah. Yeah, he still he said why Spider Man Three is my favorite of the trilogy. I've not seen it oh, yet, but okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, he's yeah he's made that video. I've not seen it yet, but I'll get round to it. It's interesting, yeah, because I mean, I um, I think this film is the best of the trilogy in certain aspects, and it's the worst in the trilogy in a lot of aspects as well. I think. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I think when 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 there's uh. When the film is firing on all cylinders, when it's at its best, it's the same magic that the first two films have. I think when it when everything is operating at max capacity. Hmm, a giant metal girder coming towards me. I'll walk. Yeah, walk towards it. Come to on, on Gwen. I've got a secret. It's my copier. <laughs> I always keep forgetting Gwen Stacy is in this. Oh, and she has no yeah, business being I'll... in this. Yeah, no, neither does Madagi, neither does Captain Stacy, to be honest. Because, no. um, yeah, I mean, I like, I think Jane. The funny thing is, they re... James Cromwell and Bryce Dallas Howard, they do reunite again in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> I think 
you know, uh, Captain Stacy's in this because Gwen's in this, and I think that's the only reason oh, yeah, he's, he's in this. Does it, like I, uh, I, that character could have been anyone. Um, but, yeah, um, James Cromwell said he's a tall guy. I think he's like nearly seven foot. He's he's pretty massive. Yeah, yeah. He's a legendary actor yeah. as well. It's pretty. It's pretty great they got him to do this, even he's if it's a, a thankless role. I know he's been arrested on a few occasions for his protest against um, meat eaters because he's a strong. Oh, is he? Uh, vegan. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, he was a vegetarian for years, but after he did Babe, a film about um, <laughs> the warning you about the horrors of eating meat, he became a vegan. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. Fair enough. So, Bryce Dallas Howard, um, I f- only found this out watching Oliver Harper's video on this. She did all these stunts herself, and she was pregnant, and she didn't... She was, she yeah. Did, she, she didn't know she was pregnant. And, I mean, this is, like, pretty uh, tight wi- um, wires and harnesses being wrapped around her waist and stuff. That could have been really dangerous to do. Uh, yeah, definitely. <sighs> And she doesn't. She doesn't really look pregnant either. No, she unless doesn't. It's just, unless it's just clever use of clothing. Well, so I just again, like she, nobody knew. <laughs> so it was pretty. Did she? Did she know? She didn't know. No, she only found out. I think oh. after filming wrapped. That's what I mean. It was quite a dangerous. Could have been disastrous. Um, but that action sequence when he when, he's, when he's when he's like uh, flying through the debris and stuff again, incredible. Absolutely incredible. I do wonder, um, had the films continued to Spider-Man 4, would she have been in the fourth film? Uh, I don't know. I, t- what the- I don't think they would have, because it's not like in here he leaves uh, MJ to be with Gwen, like, uh, like it may have been in the comics or vice versa. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I question... And, and then again... Yeah, go on. Yeah, and then again, Spider-Man 4, it would have had um, Mysterio, Vulture, Lizard, mm. all of those. Yeah. I mean, I I question why she's at the funeral at the end. Cause yeah, she didn't know Harry Osborn. She, she, well, yeah, she didn't know Harry. You can't say that, say that she was going there to support Peter because... She hates him now after what he did at the after what he does at the um at the jazz club later on. Why yeah. is she there? I don't get why she's there. Um but in, in terms of where we leave her in this film, we leave her feeling embarrassed and humiliated and used. Uh so I'm not sure would they have played that up in Spider Man four? I'm not sure. Oh fan of Again, I feel they go too far with the comedy here, you know, because the Daily Bugle scenes in one and two they're quick, snappy, and witty, but here it just feels drawn out. The whole take your bill, not that one, not that one, not, not that, that one. one. <laughs> I, I think I, um, I, I'm a fan. I just like J.K. Simmons, to be honest. Just more, <laughs> more. You know, I mean, there was actually more. Again, you can find it in the bloopers section of this. There's, they, they have this whole thing called the Chimes of Serenity. Where it was going to be like this running joke that Hoffman and Betty were like had these chimes that they kept presenting to him to calm him down and stuff, and it's <laughs> just, it's in the bloopers. But I think that would have been a step too far because that at that point it just becomes a sitcom, right? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, although I wouldn't mind a sitcom about the Daily Bugle officers. Not going to lie, I'd watch that. <laughs> so, um, who's the better Eddie Brock, Tova Grace or Tom Hardy? Well, uh, I mean, I'll say Tom yeah, Hardy because he's closer to the comics, but they're very different. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I've not seen it since it came out, but Tom Hardy's performance—I can't call it good. It's just like he knows he's in it something stupid, so he just <laughs> completely goes all out for it. And yeah. and oh yeah, we're getting "Let There Be Carnage" oh, this I, year. Yeah, I keep forgetting that thing's coming out. Is gonna be carnage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll take what, I, I, and I'm gonna it's probably a very big hot take here, but I quite like Topher Grace in this role because he's a very yeah, he, he's a mirror to Peter, specifically this version. He is of Peter. someone who tries to. They're both photographers, but whereas Peter is honest and trustworthy, he's a mm. Topher Grace. Uh, sorry, Eddie Brock here is a slime ball who tries to cheat his way through life. But he's such a smarmy again, prick. I just think it. 
I think it makes him a bit of an idiot because it's like he doesn't get how the world works. Like, he cheats his way through yeah. getting a job, and then when he's found out, he's like, I've been wrong. Yeah. No, no, you have to. Well, well, That's yeah. not how the world works. This is, this is somebody who's who never had an Aunt May or an Uncle Ben to teach him yeah, those lessons. Yeah, possibly, yeah. I love that as well. <laughs> Nobody care about what I want? I do. Shut up. Get out. <laughs> 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 that's brilliant I love that running joke of him not being able to remember Brock's name either Brock here what you doing yeah. I like Bernsteins <laughs> no yeah and, and I know people are like oh yeah but Eddie Brock's a bodybuilder he's massive he's not like uh, he's not like to- Weasley little Topher Grace and yet no yeah. no, he isn't but also that probably would have felt weird opposite Toby Maguire it, it just I, I don't uh- know but he's a journalist, isn't he? In the comics, he's he's a he's a journalist who's who's fucking massive. Like he's a big <laughs> big into bodybuilding and stuff. Um, which, great Stanley cameo here. Yeah, it's a I brilliant it. cameo. That's a lovely cameo. I mean, uh, yeah, it's harder now because of yeah. him being no longer ah the infamous butler. <laughs> Now, I know one of the biggest differences in the editor's cut is that mm-hmm. the whole scene where it says, the wound uh, from your father's body came from his glider. Yeah. It's changed to Harry um, looking at a smashed photo of uh, him with Peter and MJ, just reminding him who his friends are. And yeah. Having looked at that scene, I'd argue that's probably the better alternative there. <laughs> he realises yeah. that... He can't just let his friends be in trouble. He has to put his revenge aside and forgive them. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is better. I, the whole thing with the editor's cut is Bob Morayski said it was to go back to an earlier version of the film where characters made their own decisions and weren't influenced by anyone else, which is why yeah. they removed the Aunt May scene as well later on when she gives him back the ring. But uh, I, uh, okay. yeah, which I, I don't like that so much but I do, I do much prefer the that version of the scene where he decides to help Peter my only problem with it is that in that version of the film there's no resolution to Harry finding out that Peter didn't kill his father because obviously he never that's finds true, that out yeah. that's the only problem I have with it um, but I think it works a lot better than uh, the night your father died I cleaned his wound. Um, yeah, do you know how many lives you could have saved if you just told yeah, him? <laughs> exactly. That it works a lot better than how that. How much time you? Harry, how, Harry spent two years on a path of vengeance. Mm. You know, trying to find out who Spider Man was because he felt he was responsible. Yeah. But um, uh. oh, Christopher Young cameo coming up. He's the uh, guy at the piano. Oh, okay. No, not the guy playing it. The guy um, next to him. Oh, nice. And again, I've said before, it is kind of the inverse here, where in Spider-Man 2, MJ was kind of on top of the world. Her acting career was taking off on Broadway. And here now, she's lost it, basically. But yeah. the problem is here, um, if they felt her voice wasn't powerful enough or loud enough, she wouldn't have got the job in the first place. I was going to say, why cast her? That's yeah. how auditions work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> has, I mean, has anyone... Obviously, you're, you're more experience in theatre and stuff than I am has anyone ever been yeah. fired from an already in production show for for, be, for, um, I've worked, for their performance I've worked on no no one's really been fired to be honest you yeah. know um, obviously people leave for like other reasons right but I've never heard of someone being fired yeah. because of their performance because like you say surely that would have been worked out in the audition stage exactly <laughs> yeah so yeah I, Yeah, and I do like that as well. She thinks they're cheering for her because they recognise her, but mm. again, it's Spider-Man. But again, take it and him not realising that he's taken everything. He's not taking it from her, but he's he's taken that limelight away from her. And this is well, this is just the peak of the of 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 the writers pumping Peter full of pride and ego. Yeah, Here, when it when he's on the building, goes they love me, and he right now <laughs> when he's playing the. Oh, that's so dorky when he's playing the drums. Plus, it is a bit like in Superman 3 where he makes that public appearance. Yeah, and yeah. Bat, isn't it? <laughs> we need Richard Pryor in this. Thank the Lord for Spider Man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, here, he thinks um, 
Peter stole Gwen from him, but he... Yeah, yeah. You're not... You're not technically going out, so you can't be that mad. (laughs) I know, right? And and he says, what about that amazing night that we had? And she says, look, we had a coffee. They've been been on, like, three dates at the most. And he's, like, and he's (laughs) going to ask her to marry him. And it's like that, that he's so ignorant. Yeah. And that's what I mean. We have the, we have Peter and Ezzy in very similar places in their lives where they're so ignorant of what's going on around them and they're so sure of themselves. And by the end of the piece, Peter chooses the path of good uh, yeah. and to, to shed away all of his pride and ego. Eddie chooses I mean, to embrace it. Yeah, and I just remembered there was talk of splitting this film into two, wasn't there? I believe the the the, the cutoff point was going to be. Peter getting rid of the symbiote and Eddie. Uh, yeah, I guarantee you could have yeah. ended it with you know the symbiote going to Eddie, him you know going towards the camera, going rah, and yeah. I guarantee audiences would have been back say the following year. Probably but would they have called, would they have called it Spider Man Three Part Two, or would they've just gone and said it? This is Spider Man Four. Uh, well, I, I think that complication was a lot of the reason why it didn't happen in the end because I think yeah. uh, behind the scenes everyone just sort of felt like. Um, do we really want to... Funny enough, I can remember in 2010, it was on the Newsround website as well. Mm. Uh, you know, they were saying, um, saying um, Sony reveals plans for Spider-Man 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, there was going to be a second trilogy. Like, yeah, I think they were going to be shot back-to-back or something yeah. like that. I can't remember, and I just thought, oh, cool. And then literally, what, a year later, a couple months later, Spider-Man gets exactly. rebooted. What is this like, guy going to do? He's... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's going to hit him over the head with a shot. It looks like he's going to decapitate him. It's a spade, not an axe. Um, more brilliant, uh, brilliantly directed action coming up. Remember, I said last time how uh, Sam Raimi loves to end CGI shots on a very real element, and that's very true in a minute when we get <laughs> Spider-Man smashing through the cars, and then that's a real stuntman being dragged along, and then back to CGI, and then back and forth. It works really well. And this is this is again Sam Raimi exercising his influence. Uh, he's been very influenced by B movies and monster movies and yeah. Godzilla and stuff like that. That's that's that whole massive CGI Sandman is, is had, him um, exercising that. They should have had Anakin Skywalker fight the Sandman, <laughs> his greatest. Nemesis. Oh, it would have been a battle for the ages. <laughs> And of course, I can't take this scene seriously because of the unusual suspect oh, yeah. pointing at that woman. Pointing at that woman extra. What did she do? Grab her head and be like, oh. she, yeah. she like points and goes, oh, that's oh, oh. She grabs her head and rocks, rocks side to side, yeah. That was so <laughs> weird. And of course, this character, as you dubbed last time, is called Forgetful Harry. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's his I'm name, mate. Like <laughs> I'm a bird. He's a bird. He's a bird. Like Oh, God, it'd be like if the Joker lost his memory of Batman and just <laughs> just became, I don't know, a kid's entertainer. But I had no malicious plan. He was just doing it because it's happy. Like, I like making kids happy. Funnily uh, enough. You know, I love being an entertainer. <laughs> funnily enough, there's a comic book story that's very similar to that. <laughs> like, the Joker well, loses yeah, his yeah. memory of um, and goes well, normal. Like if- It'll be like if the Daleks lost their memory of the Doctor and just kept screaming Doctor Who. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, that actually happened, didn't it? I forget about that. I mean, it, oh, I mean, I know it's not for here, but it it does baffle me that the Moffat era had two Dalek reboots, shall we say, yeah. in a row, and by the next story, it's completely forgotten. Yeah. Just oh. victory at the Paradigm Daleks Asylum. They by that time they've gone and. Um, but end of asylum, they lose their memory of the Doctor, and by the time we get to time of the Doctor, they've got their memories back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like, well, what is the point of the of them losing their memories then? I know. And this kiss and he- as well. This is this is like, oh, I an- like this. another stab I'm in the heart. In over- yeah, I'm going to be swinging in from over there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, some people say, well, maybe he didn't know that MJ would be looking. No, he explicitly tells yeah. him, I'm going to swing it from over there. He knows. Oh. He know, and it, it, that's what I mean. He's so convinced that his relationship is perfect and nothing can go wrong and they're in a wonderful position. 
he's not <laughs> he he's so ignorant to the issues they're having that he thinks kissing somebody else like this isn't going to matter. Yeah, plus also um and I really again, like it. Earlier, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, again, earlier, MJ told Harry that she was cut from the play, but she hasn't told Peter. And again, she... It just feels like she's not learnt much from the second film because she's not being honest with Peter. She expects support to be given to her, but she's not telling him why. Yeah. <laughs> As in, what, what the whole problem is. Probably, probably because of their talk from earlier, though, right? Like, probably because of the whole... Uh... Yeah, because... Yeah, and as far as MJ is concerned, Harry doesn't have an alter ego, yeah. so maybe it's because she can be honest with him, that's why exactly. uh, she tells him. But then when they kiss it later and they regret it, it's just, again, I feel it's so pointless, it never comes back. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, that's Grant Curtis there, one of the producers being uh, swallowed by the stand, and there's there's in the behind the scenes, there's footage of him <laughs> being pressed up against the glass with sand and uh, it looks oh, yeah, very is uncomfortable the, is the sand actually pressing on the accelerator is it really that heavy yeah <laughs> yeah I mean the sand is interesting in this because it was all done they like there are tests from like I think when Spider-Man 2 was being released of uh, of Sandman and, and there are uh, there's, there's a guy in the Spider-Man outfit and they're just chucking different types of sand at the costume to see how it reacts to it and uh, I think the sand they have in here is like a mix of like beach sand and sand that they created themselves and yeah yeah, it's very cool and what does make Sandman cool is that Spider-Man can't grab onto him yeah, <laughs> that, oh yeah they, get the, they, they talk about, Stan Lee talks about that a lot in the behind the scenes of this, he's like well how does he fight a villain he can't grab onto he can't, he, he can't punch him because it will just go through him you know yeah. And I believe they for that effect of, uh for the effect of like Sandman's arm changing and stuff they used uh, an amputee I think. So there's a guy oh, a guy okay. who only had one arm and they and they um yeah it was the behind the scenes on this is fascinating. I, I the special features on yeah, this are, I like, are great. Yeah, I like how there's a feature for every villain. Mm. It yeah. shows how differently they created them. And um, I do love his line at the end of this scene. Where do all these guys come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like this is the third or fourth time this has happened. It's How brilliant. does this keep happening? Um, and the suit is very slightly different again. The the frames around the eyes are a different colour now, I think, than they were in the second one. I think so, um, yeah. So, basically the same, but slightly different. I remember this film was um, being discussed on Twitter for other reasons a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's, uh, it's a picture of Tobey Maguire when he's taking off the black suit and he's got like a blue screen oh um, yes vest on because he didn't really get that much into shape for this film did he no he didn't he's quite he's quite he's not he's not chubby but he's not he's not he's not built (laughs) yeah because I'd argue with how agile Spider-Man is he's someone who's quite skinny yeah like like Tom Holland and I'd say Andrew Garfield as well is probably the the best choice for Spider-Man like for me, I'd argue my shoulders are too big, so <laughs> I don't think I could ever be Spider-Man. No. <laughs> In fact, here's a fun fact. Someone from my uni course um, did or, did audition for S- Spider-Man when they were casting for the MCU. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, obviously they, yeah, obviously they didn't get the part, but <laughs> that is cool. That would cool, though, <laughs> Oh, this is, I'm, this is my favourite Bruce Cam- Bruce Campbell car- cameo of the three. I, I oh, yeah, it's so over the top. I love it. The fact that they even yeah. they even have to give him the line, "I am French." <laughs> <laughs> Back out. But admit, yeah, I, and again, the accent is obviously fake. But it's so over the top. Had Spider Man, had Spider Man Four happen, you could have said it's part of the illusion yeah. because of Pete P- Mysterio. <laughs> I like the fact that they, they kind of reveal him as well. Like, his hand comes into frame, um, and then they pan over to him. It's like, oh, here he is. <laughs> I've noticed another similarity with Superman 3 in this film. They do bring in a new love interest, Lana Lang, yeah. <laughs> in, in Superman 3 here, Gwen Stacy. So. Yeah. And again, I, I just... I love that they were 
I, I don't think another Spider-Man film today would would kind of take this big of a risk. And whether it pays off or not, it is a risk to make this guy such a twat. Um, it is yeah, risky. And I, do, cause and I love that they yeah, take that risk. Got, uh, yeah, you've got a hero that the audience might not yeah. want to root for. Yeah. And, um, just trying to think of other superhero films where the hero starts out as a twat. The <laughs> only one I can think of is Thor. <laughs> yeah, but even in Thor, that that's part. Yeah, that's that's not an established that's the point character. Of the arc. Yeah, that's not yeah. an established character. You know, we we and the fact that he's sat there like because he's so convinced oh, don't that cry. Oh, don't cry like you fucking twat. <laughs> like he's so Again, convinced like, that this is going well. The usual suspect is like. <laughs> The usual suspect is like grade A twat man. What an asshole! Oh, he is, as well. and yeah, for me, it just it works really well because they just push it and push it and push it, and I've got to respect them I mean, for that. Do you think? Um, yeah, do you think these um, scenes might have been a bit more forgiven if, say, he got the symbiote on him early and he started acting like this? You know, all arrogant and full of pride. See, I or do you think it's stronger when he's doing it of his own accord? <laughs> I think for what this film's going for, I think it's, and this is very controversial, I'm aware, but I think it's it's better without it at this point, and then the black suit kind of accentuates okay. it. Because I just think, like I said earlier, it's, it's a very human thing to be consumed by uh, by um, pride and ego. I think it's quite, you know, yeah. it does happen, and I think it, it's nice that this film does that and then obviously the black suit comes in to accentuate the point and um bring it more back to, down to a kind of drug addiction metaphor um but and yeah. also yeah I'm aware and that's also quite uh, <laughs> yeah fair enough and also um what I was going to say now um with Venom, he was in. He, he was introduced in the eighties, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 80s yeah. Villain. So he's not particularly. Yeah, he's not particularly old when it comes to other Spider-Man villains. So yeah. Um, yeah. And again, it's an interesting point that Richard Jackson brought up when he did a commentary for this. You know, most of the villains here, they're. I think actually Sam Raimi did have the choice of who gets to be the villain for the film, and a lot of them were from the Silver Age of comics, yeah. where. You know, you could buy a man made out of sand, an octopus scientist, and a green goblin, mm. and um, yeah, quite quite goofy, but still takes itself seriously. Mm. But I think it was Avi Arad who was like, "No, nah, you always decide the villain. We want Venom." <laughs> well, this is it. He Avi Arad straight up told Sam Raimi that he was being selfish for not giving oh. the fans what they wanted, and it's like selfish. How could how could he be selfish? He, he's poured his heart and soul and all, all of his humanity into into those first two films and that that that's they hold up so well because of it because they're so human and personal and there's so much uh, so much of Sam Raimi in there how could you say he's being selfish uh, it's, I know, su- yeah. it's such a it really pisses me off to, it does yeah i'm supposed to do the full uh, venom arc it would probably work well if it was spread across two films, yeah. but here they just... If you have it, you know, go on to Peter, realising it's too much for him, mm. have it go on to Eddie and then defeat him. But again, they just cram it all into one and put all yeah. the other stuff on top of and it. And that was another thing as well, that they couldn't have delayed it even if they wanted to, because again, Sony were like, we have to meet the summer 2007 release date. There was no room for, for it to change. So it's just like, well, maybe if they had delayed it by a year or even six months, things might have been different. Oh, don't cry. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> oh, it's... Just, oh, I want to punch him. And even after this, he still doesn't, you know, he rings up and he goes, well, I don't know what's going on. or uh... And it's, it's just, he's still so ignorant to it. I know. He, they push him down and down and down, and I, like I say, for me personally, I I I respect that because um, oh, reuse shot from Spider Man Two. Yep, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, but and again, I uh, the Uncle Ben retcon for me because um, I know a lot of people, even people who like this 
who are like big big fans of this film don't like the Uncle Ben retcon. Um, for me, I would rather it wasn't there. But yeah, ag- same, ag- yeah. again, like like I said earlier, it's one of those things that I'll talk. It just I'll feels talk... like a... yeah, go on. It just feels like a cheap way of making Sandman a personal villain to Peter Parker. Yeah. Kind of in the same way that, and again, as you said, he does feel like a Raimi villain, but, mm. you know, Green Goblin and Doc Ock, when they were made personal to Peter, it wasn't at the expense of retconning his origin or something like that. Well, yeah, um, yeah. What, I think for and me... Again, if they kept, yeah. If they kept Sandman, it's just an average... Again, they just say he's a small-time crook um, who just gets these powers and dicks around with them. That could have worked for a Spider-Man film, you know, mm. up the camp a bit. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, as Sam Gavin says, hashtag gay up Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah no. Gay up Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, I think for me, it, 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 I'll talk more about it when we get to the the um, finale for Sandman's resolution. Because I, I think it just about pays off there. It doesn't spoil things for me because at the end of the day, to quote Spider-Man 2, Uncle Ben was still killed that night for being the only one who did the right thing. So, in that respect... I suppose, yeah, because yeah. he's saying, you don't you don't want to do this, you know, why don't you put the gun down exactly. and go home? Exactly. He, 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 again, yeah. because they betray it as an accident, you know, the gun accidentally goes off, doesn't it kind of rob Peter of any irresponsibility <laughs> you could make that argument um I, I i definitely agree um i i think for me when we get to the finale when it's like there, there's a moment where peter breathes like a sigh of relief because it's like he's finally forgiving himself for years of punishing himself do you know what i mean like for years of punishing himself for what he did that night or rather what he didn't do there's this beautiful moment at the end where he, he just sighs and you can just see this is like a man finally letting go of all that. And I think as an ending to this Peter Parker's story, that kind of works for me. Um, but I'll kind of... I'll t- like I said, I'll talk that more about that when we get to that scene itself. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it. Like I say, it's one of those things that I wish wasn't there. But if it is there, I li- kind of like what they do with it, if that makes sense. Mm. But I'd rather it wasn't there. But and also I like that he gets he you know he gets presented with this news, and there's no moment where he's battling with himself about what he thinks. He immediately goes, "This man's evil. I'm all good. He needs to be killed." Um, That's he, true. He sees yeah, everything he's... as black and white. And there's no shades of grey. And again, yeah, um, kind of like the dinner scene when he um, goes to tell that mate, "Spider Man killed Flint Marco." Mm. Um, he can't, he, it's almost like he expects her to be happy as well. But, well, he even says it. Uh, yeah, he, he says, oh, I, th- I thought you'd be... And then, obviously, he and again, stutters, but, yeah. Spider-Man 2 does um, kind of hint that Aunt May knows he's Spider-Man, but um, mm. with this, it's kind of confirmed that she doesn't think he's Spider-Man because... Yeah. Had she known that, she'd be like, wait, you actually killed yeah, be like, oh, what, you, what? Hang on. <laughs> My nephew's a murderer. I don't understand. <laughs> Spider-Man doesn't kill people. And again, right, right there, that moment is another big moment for him, where where he's just like he cuts her off and he's like, okay, great, thank you. I don't need your help. Like mm-hmm. he's so. Yeah full of himself and full of his own self-importance that he's like no i can do this i'm right everyone else is wrong because in his mind yeah. in his mind morally he's 100 percent in the right he's done nothing wrong and everyone that tells him otherwise everyone that wrongs him are 100 percent bad and mm. i think it, it, like i said earlier i think it's, there's a really beautiful moment at the end where he realizes that there are shades of gray and i like that yeah and I'm I I'm sorry I, I I fucking love this scene, this this whole transformation scene I think is brilliant. Yeah. The atmosphere is incredible. Yeah, I do like. Um, it's an interesting take for a Spider-Man film for to have him think you know everything's black mm. and white, but 
Yeah, I feel like I'm repeating myself here. It's just, oh, again, yeah. after the first two films, for me, it feels like a step backwards. Yeah. But if I you look that. at something like uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, um, Peter and Spider-Man, they look at the Vulture, they just see him as a guy who's evil, mm. you know, stealing things, and the glorious, great Mr. Stark. He's evil and must be stopped. Yeah. And that makes sense. It's quite early in his time as Spider-Man, and again, he's a 15-year-old kid. Yeah. He doesn't think everything is black and white. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, I think it. Do, I think it does work better there than it does here because, say, if this was the first film, maybe mm. it could have worked. But just after all the development he's gone through in the first two, it just again feels like a step backwards for me. I, I think the problem I have with it in Homecoming is that they, they never have that moment where he's like, "Huh, maybe." Mr. Stark isn't the hero that I w- that I'm building him up to be. Do you know what I mean? Like it, they never have that bit yeah. where he, where he kind of learns otherwise. And when he's presented with facts that should confirm otherwise to him, he's just like, "Why are you telling me this?" I think that's kind of yeah. my problem. With, obviously, we'll talk more about it when we get to that film. But yeah, that's kind of there's no resolution to that. I feel, but I do agree that they, they do do that quite well in that film, and it's quite subtle, and I like that. Yeah, I do like the black suited Spider Man. Um, plus, I like how the eyes are a lot more pointy and wider, kind of like Venom's eyes. Oh yeah, people hate this nice suit. People hate this oh, suit. I like yeah, it. I really like it. People are like, oh, it's just a black version of his regular costume. They should have had the giant white spider and stuff. And it's like, well, yeah, that would have been cool, but, but... That's, that's for Venom. Exactly. I like that. So, and yeah. I know. Because in the comics, um, the black suit is this jet black suit. There's no webbing, and it's just a giant white spider on the front. But they oh, okay. they they did costume tests with it, and the reason they didn't choose it, and I agree with the reason they didn't choose it, is because it looks like an S and M suit. <laughs> it looks <laughs> it, the, the costume tests look awful because it looks like a sex suit, um, and <laughs> uh, and it's not just the regular one, but black. The, the spider is... Uh, I love the, how the legs on the spider are, like, curled upwards. Almost like a, de- yeah, like a dead spider, you know. When, when spiders die, their legs curl inwards. And his muscles kind of look um, bigger as well. Yeah, his muscles look bigger. The eyes are bigger. Um, it's cool. I really like it. Yeah. And Venom is basically... It's an addiction story. Ah, yeah. More or less. Um, and that's, again, that, that's... One advantage, I think, that the editor's cut has over this is that it really emphasises the addiction metaphor. Um, oh, okay. It really because there's a bit. Um, I will talk about this more later in the film because of that. That cut like re- reorders a lot of the film. Like scenes are in different orders and stuff. And there is a scene inserted where he hears something from the from the case. And he opens it, and the suit is breathing and moving upwards, and like it's uh, like it's breathing, and it's uh, and he, he looks at it, and he just smiles, and it's like a dr- it's yeah, like an just... addict, and it's brilliant. Uh, but I just like to point out when the symbiote got into his suit, it went over his red and blue one, but now yeah, it's two separate. Suits. I don't get this at all because the whole thing in the comics is it's like it's really difficult to remove. You can't once it's on you, you can't get it off, but. So, so yeah. what happened here was it? Did he have two costumes and it only got on the one, or mm. is there? Mm. Or is it just a separate? I don't know. I I don't. Again, I think that comes from Sam Raimi not really having a uh, a love for the character, which I don't blame him for. Yeah, it's not... he's he's admitted he's he doesn't like Venom yeah. because, and also. Um... Uh, I do like how this fight seems between Sandman. It's there to show how much more brutal his fight is yeah. when he's wearing the black suit. Um, you know, he's literally uh, you know pinning him up against a moving train, disintegrating his oh, face. I think it's but also, yeah. it also shows you also why he prefers it because he, he's able to use it for stealth. If it was in his red and blue down in those tunnels, he'd probably be easily seen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh and and the whole the whole the tempting the temptation of the power and everything yeah. Again, there that shot is perfect. It illustrates brilliantly why he uses yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, this the uh, is the I wonder this might be my favorite action sequence of the whole film. The way it's yeah. it's so creative and the water the water so... the water was a real water tank that they exploded. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, 
Also, question: um, Is Sandman's weakness in the comics really water as well? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've read his first appearance. Um, it would. I can't. Re- I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. I mean, it would make sense. It would make a lot of sense, but yeah. he'd be fucked when it rains. Exactly. So this, if this film was in Britain, uh, you know. Oh yeah, like that as well. He jumps off and he swings through the pipes and goes back up. That's so cool. Oh, I that love it. Great, yeah. And if you look closely, you can see his teeth are coming off as well when he when he uh, grinds his face up against the train. You can hear and see his teeth coming off. Oh yeah, it's so cool. Ooh. And I never noticed that until a few years ago. Was that noise when his face is being? Yeah, disintegrated against the train. Reminds me of being at the dentist. Oh, when you yeah. Fill in. <laughs> well, see, I, I think Thomas Hayden Church, he said he took the part without even reading the script. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um... I he I couldn't have picked a better actor for Sam myself. I think he's he's excellent. He's straight out of the comics. Uh, the way his mm. look and everything. So yeah, the, this water tank they actually put, they ripped open a water tank and just unleashed it on this set that they built, and uh, it was one of the most dangerous things they did apparently. <laughs> he's got the same weakness as the aliens from Signs. <laughs> Good riddance. Oh god, that meme was everywhere in 2015 when they said the <laughs> Andrew Garfield Spider-Man oh, series uh, yeah. is cancelled. So many gamey stands, they were like, "Good riddance." Yeah. <laughs> oh, why put your hair uh, down? Uh, oh. a, a lot of things. <laughs> the black suit apparently makes hair dye and eyeliner appear. On <laughs> yeah, that's a bit too silly Get for you. me a little bit it pushes it just a like, little bit too, again it's too obvious yeah. it's just like you don't like i don't think addicts really put their hair down yeah. <laughs> and, but you it's, fix this damn it's the eye it's the eyeliner as well it's just like oh god okay but i think we spoke about this last yeah. time it's like this this bit with mr dickovich here is great because you expect him to blow up it's just like, oh it's a he's a good boy he's Something must be troubling him. Yeah. I do like it's that. nice because he may be a to- maybe a total slob, but <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. It's nice. It's another. I mean, there should be a humanity. scene of him. Yeah, there should be a scene of him saying, hmm, "Maybe I should stop seeing written." I think that's <laughs> what <laughs> troubling him. <laughs> yeah, you see behind him there, like Uncle Ben looking over his shoulder. Uh, that's a really is it just awesome a, bit of set design. Yeah. And here, when he when he opens up the suit like that, there's this great bit in the trailer that isn't in the film. He looks down at the suit, and there's this huge loud noise, and it's this huge jump scare, and he sees Venom in the mirror. And uh, oh, cool. I wish it was in the film, because it, cause it's this perfect little bit of horror in the trailer. He looks down, and you just hear this, Rah! and he, and that's what <laughs> makes him take it off. Yeah, I'll say that. They did visually get Venom down really well. The screeching, did, yeah. uh, symbiote, the shark teeth. He's a bit too skinny, but uh, aside from that, yeah. I think he's great. Yeah, because I, I think um, I've seen a few clips of Spectacular Spider-Man, and he's mm. he's not just a black Spider-Man, he's bigger he's than huge. him, so much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Traditionally, Venom is, is this hulking figure. I am actually, I, I mean, I didn't like Venom that much, but I am curious for Let There Be Carnage because, um, mm. and, funnily enough, Andy Serkis is directing. Yeah, that's the one bit of it for me where I'm like, this could be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he's, uh, it's almost like he's trying to get his big yeah. directing debut out there, but no one's giving him a chance because he directed that jungle book film but it went straight to netflix didn't it yeah and it, it apparently it wasn't very good but i don't really blame him for that because disney essentially did the same concept around the same time <laughs> um so it just sort of i can understand why whoever was distributing it didn't want any part of it anymore because it was just like well it, it, they've done the same thing 
And this is, again, I spoke about in Spider-Man 2 how much I love this trilogy. This trilogy's ability to contrast scenes from other films. So where we had in the second one, the backyard talk from the first one was contrasted against that one in the second one. Here we have MJ working at a jazz club again, or in you know the first one it was a diner. And in that film, she told Peter, and he was like, well, "It's nothing to be embarrassed about. You've got a job." Whereas in this film, she yeah, exactly. he, he doesn't ha- she doesn't have faith in him enough to tell him that because she just thinks he'll he'll find it. In many ways, he's become what Harry was in that film because in that film she says, yeah. Harry, "Don't tell Harry. He might find it. He might think I'm low." And. Uh, Mm, yeah. yeah. So, I, I like that contrast. I'm painting. Painting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I've been toying for a while. I just need to. I need to find a way to rip Blu-rays because I really want to make my own little edit of this, which kind of trims out some bits I don't really like and then adds in stuff from the trailers. I've got a DVD I've got a DVD ripper but for some reason I just can't I can get the files but I just can't convert them it's just a pain in the back copyright stuff they've gone a lot stricter on that recently Um, yeah and then again I don't really make videos anymore so I might just leave it. I I, I tend to get all my footage off YouTube like download them off YouTube because it's just easier (laughs) but I want. I, I. Those sites seem to be shutting down because yeah. Sam Garrett and he was like, "Fuck." Yeah, I know. It's it's, <laughs> it's becoming harder and harder. Um, I, I want to rip Blu-rays. I just want a, like a high quality version of this so I can tinker with it, and I want to like redub Venom's voice later, so it's not just Topher Grace talking with the Venom um, suit on. And it amazes me that some films are up there in full. Like, oh, um, yeah. the two prime examples for me are uh, a film called A Night to Remember from the 50s. It was about the Titanic. It's up on YouTube, high definition, mm. in full, like, no editing whatsoever. And there's a film called from 1968 called If, again, uh, on YouTube in full. And funnily enough, um, James Cameron's Titanic was on YouTube, but it wasn't a full video. It was like in... Um, Videos in a playlist, basically, oh, and the film was in order. Like parts, and it was, yeah. yeah, and it was, um, it was so weird. It was like sixty frames per second. Someone <laughs> had converted it to that, and also someone had put in the deleted scene. So oh, effectively, you got, yeah, effectively, you got the four-hour cut of Titanic. Oh God, yeah, no YouTube policies. It's like you get creators being punished for um, and, uh, for, for for using copyright copyrighted work in in the channels that are their livelihoods but then you get people just uploading full videos to youtube and they don't care and it's just yeah, like, i remember uh, revenge of funnily enough revenge of the cybermen and destiny of the daleks they were up in full on youtube yeah. and yeah someone like say josh snares got punished for using like 10 seconds of footage yeah uh, my, my video got blocked worldwide um when i did a royal family video it got blocked worldwide i had to re-edit it like crazy um, and it didn't use any audio. I used like one second of audio from it, and the rest were just clips that I'd put filters on. And yeah, no, block worldwide. We don't want you to use it. And it's like, well, and then, double standards. Um, anyway, let's do the twist. Stop. <laughs> <that insane. laughs> yeah, imagine if the Joker did this with Harley Quinn, but it wasn't evil. It was yeah. just him having a good. Just again, he's not threatening. He's yeah. just. I did. You just want to pinch his cheek and be like, "Oh, he's cute." I, I've got. I've got to say, it does look like the, the actors are having fun. <laughs> it that's. It, yeah, I think that. this kind of. I don't mind the scene just because that laughter at the end from Kirsten Dunst looks really real. Like uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that bit with the the flipping um, was yeah. was improvised because it does just look like it looks very real. And again, it's that joy that Peter's not providing for her. And uh, yeah, again, I. But he wrote the, and he wrote her a he play. Wrote her a play. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'll, I'll point to the editor's cut as well. In between MJ getting out of the elevator and them doing the twist, there's this shot of like Peter alone in his room, like just kind of rubbing his chest, and it's just that contrast. Whereas like he's alone, 
and these two are, are having this fun together and uh it's quite nice yeah and again they kiss but it like ha- peter never finds out yeah. it's just oh yeah, it actually pointless. does because he because he does say i mean harry does say it's like she used to kiss me oh yeah, yeah. Then it just feels so pointless like why <laughs> i like what the music's doing here because the music kind of is like yeah things have become fucked if you know like the music is kind of all it, it it has this feeling to me where it's like jesus things for these characters have just become so harry should have been gone, yeah. like here harry should have been like here why mj why <laughs> why you bitch <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> please talk to me please i could not go on without you mj <laughs> Oh, yeah, tearing me apart, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're coming up to the edit that I find hilarious in a minute. It's like my father; he died, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's maybe that's kind of the point because he's doing it for his own bias because oh, you know yeah. he, he still thinks spider-man killed harry and he thinks that yeah is malicious like yeah that's true I him. that's very true maybe it could be that I that's know. a good point that's a good point i like that do ghosts exist in this universe or is he actually crazy i think this is his mind like the uh and, yeah also why does his memory just come back like that uh, yeah. it makes no <laughs> sense. was it stress maybe because of mj I like that, kind but... of I always interpret it as like because um, he hears Norman's voice first. I always like interpreted it as though like the accident maybe uh, kind of suppressed these the the effects of the drug maybe and maybe this is like his real psyche kind of breaking through for the first time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Some bollocks and like again, that. Now the, and again, now that Sandman's out of the way, we can now focus on Harry again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just it's about it's sloppy. Yeah, if you want Peter to live, you you have to do this. <laughs> I mean, you, you want to kill him anyway, don't you? I think he wants to torture him first, though. I think that's the whole mention, uh, motive behind it. It's like, I want to make you feel like shit and then kill you. But, yeah, it just feels like, kite the middle man, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, plus, MJ, your, your boyfriend is Spider-Man. Just tell him he's got... To... Just tell yeah. him Harry attacked. Go over there. Get him. That, yeah, that's never... I've always been a bit... By the way, does nobody question the fact that he's got so many... Fo- oh, I guess... No, ignore that. Uh, that was that was my brain dying there. I was going to say, does nobody question the fact that he's got all those photos of Spider-Man on his wall? But then I realise, of course, he's the photographer. Yeah, no, my brain just went, <laughs> went weird then. This is quite for for uh, Raimi stands in the in the in the community. This uh, this bridge is a is a very famous place to visit and. Uh, oh and, uh, yeah, I can see why. Yeah, the, wonder if people people. Uh, wonder if people like to reenact the scene. I was going to say, do you think people have actually taken their significant others here to break up with them? <laughs> oh, that'd be cruel. There's an urban and legend um, surrounding this. I mean, their new um, boyfriend or girlfriend stands in the yeah. background and goes, oh, no. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an urban legend here, which I'm pretty sure is false, um, but it did the rounds a few years ago where it's like, apparently, in the premiere of this film, at the premiere, there was a scene here where um, this whole breakup went on longer and Peter went down on his knees and started screaming and crying and curling up into the fetus position and rocking back and forth. And uh, apparently the the legend goes that it was so bad and so funny that it was removed for all versions. Um, Yeah, the test screening for this, um, the reactions were very mixed, weren't they? Yeah, they were, yeah. Which is why a lot of it was reshot, I guess, because, again, there were a lot of reshoots on it. I do wonder. Um, I'm trying to think of big budget movies. 
completely redone by test screenings. Um, In fact, the only, now the biggest example I can think of, and it's it's to not want to be sure, but Thomas and the Magic Railroad. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah, you may laugh, but honestly, it was completely torn apart by test audiences because the voice cast for all the steam engines was so different because most of them were British. In fact, the voice for Thomas was a taxi driver from the Isle of Man, and that was his big break. <laughs> and um, yeah, the test audiences said, oh, he sounds too old to be Thomas, so they cut him completely and replaced him with another actor. <laughs> And I don't think he's acted since, and that's... Oh, that's so Does sad. Does that film have a director's cut? Because I swear... It... There's a word print edition on YouTube. Yeah, no, I've heard that but, before. Um, it's not It's not the finished film, because, yeah. you know... Like, the original voices, not all of them have been put back in. Yeah. And they cut out an entire villain as well, called P.T. Boomer. <laughs> he was a human villain. And um, he was... Yeah, apparently he was too scary for younger viewers. Oh. And I've seen the footage, I'm like, he's not that scary, <laughs> come on. So they completely cut out a villain and just had um, a big diesel engine called Diesel 10 be the main villain. Yeah. And, yeah, it was completely torn apart and just... Com- it's a, it, it's like two different films, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's the... I mean, Halloween 6 is another one. Halloween 6, so oh, okay. two different versions of that. Um, because I think it was torn apart in test screening, so like there's this whole thing where the ending is completely different between both, and there's that's a whole thing. Justice League, Justice League wasn't a, t- a test screening thing, but I think there was there was footage shown of the original cut to uh, certain people who weren't very happy with it. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm the other guy. <laughs> I think Tobey Maguire is great in this as well, because that that bombshell information there, like I think he's brilliant. Yeah, and he still thinks that Harry's lost his memory, but just that smirk and that mm. wink or something that he gives him is like, oh. yeah. <laughs> How's the pie? So good. <laughs> <laughs> That's so a meme. here is. Uh, between the two cuts here is where things diverge a bit so in this version we have the coffee shop scene and i believe now he goes to fight harry right yeah so so. yeah in the editor's cut we have the coffee shop scene he then puts Mm -hmm. on the black suit uh as like a drug to make him feel better and he goes to humiliate flint marco um oh yeah oh, okay. and then the harry fight uh so it's all shuffled around and that version oh, so the, is uh is so the Sandman fight happens like after this bit in the editor's cut from what we've just no. seen or is it another fight scene? no 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 is it a different fight? it's the um so he puts on the black suit and then goes to humiliate eddie brock so he goes to um oh, oh, eddie brock. yeah so oh, the right. whole because you said Oh, did I? All oh, right, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. So, um, so Eddie Brock. Um, yeah. So he goes to humiliate Eddie Brock. Um, and then it's the Harry fight. So the two are swapped, which gives the um dancing down the street uh, a much more sinister feel in the editor's cut because it's like he's dancing that he's just like blown up his best friend. Whereas in this version, he's <laughs> yeah. Whereas in this version, he's dancing because he's humiliated Brock and stuff. Ah, okay. So it's uh, it's two, it's two different tones, I guess, that are struck. Mm, yeah, struck. honestly. I've just permanently scarred my best friend. Mm. I'm gonna do a James Brown dance. Yeah, it's meant to be like the the, the, the dark humour of it, in a way, and that comes through more in that version, but I, I think that was a case where Sony were really nervous about it, because they didn't they, ah, they okay. didn't want they didn't want to push the dark humour that far. Uh, so... Mm-hmm. But in all honesty... Yeah, no, did... yeah go on. I was just going to say, this is a great fight, because, again, it feels like a fight between Harry and Peter, not Spider-Man and Green Goblin. Oh, it does, yeah. I love, like, the jazz the nature of the score as well. Um, yeah, it's 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 a great fight. It's a brilliant fight. <laughs> but are you good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I protected you in high school, now I'm going to kick your little ass. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Stinks, doesn't it? It's that, it's that little... Ooh. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> That's become a meme as well. Gonna cry. Gonna cry. Look at Goblin Junior. I mean, I, I, li- I like to use that when not my doctors go off on one about the chimney lever. Oh, and that's been especially relevant recently, isn't it? With the old uh, news about them uh, leaving. Yeah. Is that a lightsaber he's got? I think so. <laughs> the sound design's brilliant, though. Um, like yeah. the sound effects for that for the sky stick and everything. Just watch that bit. Did Peter literally just levitate in the <laughs> he did, air? Yeah. He just jumped over. The... Oh god! And I like this this bit of cruelty as well because it's just like he's got no inhibitions now. He's just like, no, your father despised you. You're an embarrassment to him. And it's just Ooh, like that what a t- dagger <laughs> in the heart, you know. Look, old Goblin Junior. That's become a meme that people like to throw around uh, at Tom Holland Spider Man. Actually, when people <laughs> people are like, "Look, at little Iron Man Junior, want to cry?" <laughs> if he's, if Toby Maguire truly is back and far from home, I want oh, to say that. Say Look, little Iron Man Junior, <laughs> gonna cry. <laughs> so yeah, that bit there, he blows up Harry, and in the editor's cut, that bit immediately cuts into da 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 la la la, which is just oh like God. God. Um, in all honesty, <laughs> I don't think the editor's cut is like a better or worse film than this. It's yeah. just it's just different. Like I think it does the addiction stuff better, <laughs> and I think it does the tone a bit better. But at the same time, it's still very much the same film, just slightly reordered. So I'm gonna put some doom in your eye. Um, yeah, I have a problem with this scene because they're trying to show, oh, it's Peter going darker, but the thing is, it's clearly a fake photo, and even if he didn't have the symbiote suit on, he would have yeah, done the right thing and it, said yeah. this photo is a fake, yeah. so it's like he's really turning I evil I think it's here. just the satisfaction that he gets from it more than anything. Like, the fact that he's just so, <laughs> like, pleased with himself that he's done it. <laughs> I think that, yeah, when he backs him up against the wall and stuff, you know. Yeah. It's funny, how come you've never had an issue with the Daily Bugle being slanderous against Spider-Man until yeah. now? <laughs> well, again, I think that's it. I think it's the black suit, like, cutting off his inhibitions. Yeah. Like, he's finally yeah. just like, oh, no, fuck it, I'm just gonna go nuts. Another, another meme. You're trash, bro. Trash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Get religion, and he actually d- he takes he that takes seriously. That seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ask God to kill someone. <laughs> you do your own dirty work. <laughs> Look, I'll lose everything, but there's no one who's going to hire me. But why did you do it in yeah. the first place? Then? Oh, you cheat your way through life, and then you'll. Your surprise when it comes back to bite you in the ass. Just ugh. Ah. He has. Uh, and, uh, he doesn't have as much screen time here, J.K. Simmons, as he does compared to the first. He doesn't. Two. No, he he really doesn't. Um. I mean, we do get that lovely bit at, at the end, though, where he talks to the little girl. Um, oh, yeah. Hundred bucks! All right, you little crook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and here we have this famous scene. What a yeah, piece I mean, of cinema. The defences the defenses I've heard for um, Peter dancing is that he's a dork and mm. he's never been, quote-unquote, cool. Is this what a dork thinks a cool person would do? I think this is what this... <laughs> was... down the street, I think... eye up attractive girls and dance. I think this is what this version of Peter Parker would do, because um, he's just so, like... Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this is... Um, this is... In the, in the commentary for the film, they are... This is where they really go hard on. We were wondering, can we do this? Is this too far? Um, like, they were really just pushing the 
the yeah, twattiness. and again, I think if you are going to do, if you are going to do the Venom storyline, you just, mm, I don't think there's a time and a place for comedy in it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think you have got to be serious. You have got to show him going down this dark path, doing something that you wouldn't expect Spider-Man or Peter Parker to do. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, what I do like it is clearly meant to be like their intentions behind it were like secondhand embarrassment. So the intention was to make you laugh at him, not with him. Um, and especially, I think that's clear from when he he dances down and all the women look at him like he's a fucking twat. Like they, if you look at the women, they're just they're just like, what yeah. the fuck are you doing? And like, um, yeah, and I, d- I, yeah, I find it fucking hilarious. I don't even care. Like, I just find the. Yeah, I tried this once. I just got a lot of slaps. From yeah, women. exactly. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I, I didn't really do that. <laughs> and this is another iconic location. If you want to visit in New York, you know, stand outside this yeah, this, this shop and <laughs> start dancing. Well, we need obviously a redub for um, I take a look at my <laughs> enormous penis. I gotta sing in a dance. When I glance, I glance at my pants. <laughs> and then he does the close up to his first <laughs> <laughs> It's perfect. Everything is going my way. No, you said, I love that the, the, the people coming out of that shop were like grabbing the other person as though to protect them. Like yeah, they were grabbing know, them and like ushering perfect. them away, like it's just some madman. Just keep walking, don't make eye contact. I, I, yeah, it's it's a scene. You're either gonna love it or you hate it. I don't think there's there's much uh, in between that. I I find it just maybe it's a step too far. I don't know, but it's it's yeah. <laughs> Wait, how come the locket hasn't disintegrated? Is that sand as well? <laughs> uh, I don't think so, because he was struggling to pick it up, right, when he was formed. When he was, like, when he was uh, forming, he was, like, struggling to pick it up, and... I like that song. You kidding? Yeah, really? You're looking fine, babe. <laughs> You're really gonna dig this joint. <laughs> Such a twat. And again, we get another... How much dancing is in this Many, film? much There's dancing, so much. yeah. And I mean, this... Have you heard the thing in this? That apparently, Willem Dafoe is behind them when they sit down at the table. Um, oh, have a look at that I, I don't think down. it's him, but it looks an awful lot like him. Um, right when they sit down, like behind them, <laughs> found us some shade. Some shade. <laughs> oh, I love in the montage as well that Ursula seemed to be really into it. <laughs> <laughs> It's the it's the guy in the leather jacket. Oh. Just sat behind them. I don't think that is. It's him. not him. It doesn't. But it looks similar. <laughs> yeah, true. So this scene, right? This this whole dancing scene here is ridiculous. But I think when you look at it, it's pretty. When you look at his intentions, it's really horrific. Because he's what he's yeah. he's essentially doing this to get back at his ex by taking this new girl out, humiliating her, using her like a piece of meat, just to make, just mm-hmm. to get back at his ex. And it's just that yeah, is and the is... lowest point for him. I mean, it's the only, I mean, it's the only time I actually kind of like Gwen here, when she, after the dance, she just says, that was all for her. And she says, I'm so sorry. Yeah, she, yeah. Like, she didn't want for that to happen. She walks away humiliated and hurt. And it's just like you fucking twat! You've just taken her there to use her. It's it's horrific, and uh, and 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 again contrasting it with Spider Man Two, as it, you know in in the party scene in that film, you think his life can't get any worse, and it just gets worse and worse. In this film, you're thinking he can't get any lower. You know he's just humiliated this this poor girl, and then he hits MJ. And it's yeah, just like, wow. just. And again, it just feels like such a huge tonal clash. We get this big, weird, oh, Broadway style dance. Yeah. He then hits his ex, which you'd never expect Peter Parker to do. Tonally, and, yeah. It's, yeah, it's... It's... Plus, the symbiote, it makes you act more like an animal, doesn't it? It's not necessarily anger, is it? Well, it's usually, it brings out your worst qualities. 
usually like it, it, it amplifies the negative aspects yeah. so it's like, so it, uh, which is why i think it does make perfect for me at least it makes sense that he do this because it's like he was bitter anyway and he was full of pride and ego anyway so i feel like him wearing mm-hmm. the black black suit he probably would end up doing something like this because it's just an exacerbation of all of his worst qualities yeah and um funny enough in the trailer it's edited in quite an interesting way. You see him in the black suit fighting crime. Mm. And then um, I think um, there's a line for MJ saying, what's happened to you, Peter? And it cuts to the scene where Harry's unconscious and trying to be resuscitated. Yes. And imagine if it was that. Imagine if he used the suit to... Um, what if he finds out that Harry's too strong for him and yeah. this... And the symbiote is the perfect solution where he realises that, oh, I can use this to take down Harry. And he just... Yeah. And he goes too far that he basically nearly kills his best friend intentionally. The, the trailers for this were brilliant. They were... Um, they, they were, were they, brilliant. Yeah. I wonder... You say that there probably was a cut of that film somewhere along the line where that was probably the plan. Um <laughs> you know, you never know. And this whole thing, I love. I tell you what, I love how this is directed, and I love how it's it's. Um, I love the sign design, where we have all this, and then he hits it, and it's dead silence because you just get the shock of what just happened. It is, it's yeah. like no music, no sound effects, just silence. He hit her. I think, like, I do remember. I think in the cinema there were a few, there were a few gaps. Yeah, every, every I time I, he hits her. yeah, every time I see people watching this for the first time, every time that happens, people just there's this gasp. And this, mm-hmm. this that, that that is brilliant. Uh, where she says, "Who are you?" and he says, "I don't know." Contrast that to the first one. It was, "Who are you? You know who I am. You friendly neighborhood Spider Man." Yeah. And now it's, "Who are you? I don't know." I I love that. And that's what I mean. That like when I was saying earlier, there are certain things that make poorer decisions worth it. That's kind of one of them for me. That kind of makes some of the negative aspects of the dancing stuff worth it in the end yeah <laughs> so i mean i'll say this about spider-man 3 it is for me it is a structural mess but mm. is it boring definitely not oh, no god, it's no. always entertaining something's always happening oh god yeah it's always entertaining sometimes for the wrong reasons but um yeah. but no it's never boring it's always entertaining um it's i can't say i've ever met someone who was bored by this film Yep, <laughs> and that 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 was one of the teaser posters, wasn't it? Him in the black suit in the rain. Oh, definitely. God, yeah. it's a gorgeous poster. I remember, when, I remember when Venom came out. HMV did like a special slip cover for Spider Man Three. Mm, I remember with that. that shot the church, yeah, to celebrate Venom coming out. So another thing, I think, in between this and Brock getting humiliated, there were scenes shot at the Stacy's home, where he goes to Gwen's house and to try and make amends because Gwen breaks up with him, and uh, yeah, and his dad just turns him away and says, essentially, repeats what Peter says and says, "You're trash." Um, Oh, so, which pushes okay. into this, but um, um, we know all that was shot because we have set photos of it. But uh, oh, nice. yeah, it's just never been released again. Yeah, again, the whole, the whole humbled and humiliated. It does make a bit more sense when they've doubled down on it and have his. Yeah, again, kind of good. Jumped in. Again, it shouldn't have been cut because it also explains why yeah. state why Gwen goes straight to Peter that night, right? Like it explains why he's dating her. Um, as it is, it just. In, in both... Yeah, again, here it comes the F out of nowhere. Exactly, in, in both <laughs> versions of the film that we have, it comes out of nowhere, because it's just like, well, isn't she with Eddie? Whereas in that deleted scene, <laughs> well, it's, it's like, well, it would explain that, but... Mm-hmm. It's just... I want you to kill Peter Parker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that's edited, though, though. I want you to kill Peter Parker. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. <laughs> like, it's a... Again, the score is just faultless. He must have really good eyesight if he can see Peter yeah. from all the way over. The... <laughs> you think, right? You yeah, think yeah. get out the way if one drop had already gone on him? Mm-hmm. Then again, I guess you... Yeah, just realise, with, um, 
with that blue screen vest he was he's wearing on during filming. Yeah, I just realised he there's not many scenes in this film compared to the other two with his shirt off. No, yeah. <laughs> God, and they got they yeah, got the they sim- got the look of the symbiote perfect. They did, yeah. It does there's look so really good. There's so many layers to it. The CGI holds, and it looks like it, it's truly alive. Exactly, yeah. And also, uh, yeah, does the sim. So, in the comics, like, when Peter takes off the symbiote, does it immediately go on to Eddie? Uh, in some versions, yeah. Uh, in other versions, he takes it off and it just finds its way to Eddie. Um, so, yeah, a mix of the two, really. And I love, again, love the showering scene, because it's like an addict cleansing. It's like an addict cleansing himself. It's, it's a very cliched scene to see in films but when people have stopped using drugs there's always the, the shower scene where they're like cleansing you know yeah I like how he's just sat on the floor oh. in such a lazy position, like not knowing what to do I next. love this whole scene how yeah because he's probably thinking well how do I start making amends how do I start yeah how do I start becoming to, to, to come back to the theme of the film how do I start to forgive myself yeah so this scene, then, it's completely cut from the editor's yeah, version, Yeah, it's then. completely gone, um, because uh, Bob Murawski said the reason it was taken out was because he wanted to go back to a version where characters made their own decisions, but I get that. I, oh, okay. I, I get that, but at the same time, this works for me as a conclusion to the arc of Peter asking for help, because earlier we had in the film, like, MJ was like, everyone needs help sometimes, and this is him saying essentially saying i need your help and then and aunt may kind of taking him out out of the dark so um yeah it's a big shame it's not it's not in the editor's cut because because rosemary harris is just lovely as well also it's uh, it might be a bit late to bring this up now because um in the first film peter and harry were living together but by the second film he's now in this cramped apartment yeah like, what happened between you too. kind of get the impression, right, that Harry is... That the bitterness between the two, the fact that, that Peter takes part as a Spider-Man, has kind of forced them apart. Um, Maybe, yeah. And was it, wasn't yeah. it Norman that was paying for the apartment as well? Ah, uh, yeah, true, yeah. So, so. Yeah, and then when... Well, well Norman had to move uh, Yeah, out. <laughs> and then when Norman died, he, uh, Harry probably got the apartment... Uh, got the, um, got the, uh, got the mansion, sorry. And, uh... It was probably left to him, so he moved out that way as well. And with that big mansion, he never thought, you know what, Peter, come, yeah. in, and, come and move in with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big thing to do. And that's a great line as well. Start to earn forgiveness from others, you have to forgive yourself, and I believe that you can yeah. do that. That's yeah, you, you start by doing the hardest thing, you forgive yourself. Such yeah. a great... Uh, it, uh, that, that. It is a nice scene where, after all that chaos of him taking off the suit, it's a nice scene for him to sit it's and breathe. Nice breather, but then, yeah. I feel like we're then rushing to the climax because yeah. you know you've got saying interested in teaming up, yeah, and then we cut to a news report. All of New York is holding its breath as a hostage yeah. situation is underway. Uh, well, that's a, yeah. And, uh, I just here's the question: Why didn't Venom go to Harry? He wants Peter dead. Yeah, very true. That's very true, yeah. Uh, I don't buy their team up, to be honest, because uh, from Sandman's point of view, Spider-Man thinks he's dead, so why doesn't he think, well, maybe I should lay low and just um, work on helping my daughter? Mm. Uh, why doesn't he just get a job? <laughs> <laughs> just get a job with CV. You could at least sign on to Job Centre, <laughs> then you'd have a bit of money coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, and I don't like I don't like Venom's voice there, because it's like at a point it is just it's just Topher Grace's voice, but slightly deeper. Um, yeah, because there is um, there is a cut, an edit on YouTube where it's like, oh, I'm dead. yeah, I'm yeah. Dead. That's yeah. kind of which does sound a lot better. I would like to, yeah. That's again, if I ever made an own my own edit of this, that's kind of something I'd want to do as well, like fix the voice. I mean, the voice. In, uh, the voice in Venom, it's just... It sounds so goofy, like, uh... Oh, maybe I did Amy lose you too. Pussy. <laughs> Pussy. No, I'm not to eat, Mr. Chan. 
Take that back. <laughs> I've noticed. I've got a perfect take that back. <laughs> Big continuity error in that. When he eats that robber, when he exits the shop, there's no body anywhere. Oh, no, there's yeah. no blood. It's just. What did he do? Just eat him and clean up every. That was rock. probably you know, <laughs> cut for a PG to get a PG thirteen, wasn't it? Oh, it's a good thing she took this cab. Yeah. <laughs> This this lady here, very sad. It was quite big in the news. I remember she um, committed suicide not long after this came out. And that horrible. Yeah. See again, like I know a lot of people sometimes are like, well, just making a film longer isn't going to make it better. And I do agree, but in cases like this, I think adding in a lot of that deleted material would help to fix. Little issues like the rush to the climax, and little issues like just uh, like the whole Gwen thing not quite adding up. I think it would help. I do think it would genuinely help. And in the comics, I think there's like, um, isn't there like a period where Eddie Brock has the symbiote, but people still keep thinking it's the black suited Spider Man? Yeah. yeah, there is. Um, there's quite a long period. Yeah, it's like framing him for stuff. Mm. This. I love the thing you're kicking oh, in here when he picks up it. It's, it's incredible. Great. Everyone loves this shot. Like again, people, yeah, it's it's divorced from the film as well. Everyone loves that bit because it's just it's so triumphant. And I, lo- I just I get goosebumps in a minute when uh, when we hear that look and we and the theme comes in as he swings in to save the day. Brilliant. Yeah, it feels like um, it does feel kind of like a precursor to the Avengers. Mm-hmm. You've you know asking where they all come in and save the day and um i wonder if people at the time looking at this when they see peter and harry team up i thought oh is that the closest we're gonna get to a hero team up probably yeah. <laughs> well i i know a lot of people at the time like they they always say oh, i have such fond memories of this film because for me it was the first time i'd ever seen superheroes team up on screen that weren't already a team that is yeah. mm. In the trailer, there's a shot of him saying, "I need your help," but he's in his regular clothes. So, it, so they must have, yeah, there yeah. Is. so they must have shot it twice again. Probably another reshoot. Because yeah. I know um, Thomas Hayden Church said they they shot four versions of the ending with um, Flint Marco. Four. Yeah, they shot four different versions of it. So seeing where he, where Peter kills the Sandman again. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I, there's probably there probably is a version out there where he does die. You know whether whether Peter yeah. kills him or not. What is going to be in the, the butler was in his head. Mm. The butler, something like that. <laughs> it just suggests that he he knew that Norman caused his own death. He was just denying it and repressing it for years. And yeah. He, Kind of him realizing, yes, he did kill himself. He was a monster, yeah. and I, I do. It is a bad omen when on the bloopers, this poor actor is really struggling to get out this line, and it's a bad omen because they have like five different takes of it on the bloopers, where every time he's like, "The blade that pierced his heart, the the blade came from his trailer, um, came, the blade came from his gilder." <laughs> Poor guy. Again, it's like Tom was so. What is line? <laughs> I did not hear her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I hear her. Line. No, do I shake the line? <laughs> <laughs> now, wasn't this going to be Gwen Stacy? Didn't you say? But again, very last minute reshoot. They yeah. reluctantly had to. Yeah, yeah, this is where the whole thing where people always say Kirsten Dunst hated this film the whole thing came about was that she wasn't and again it's in the trailer you can see it in the trailer where she's saying to harry we need to forgive each other and it's um yeah it was gonna be she wasn't she was gonna have a different role in the final battle and it was gonna be somebody else that was gonna be kidnapped and gwen because there's footage of gwen at the final battle again set photos 
of her in like a, a different costume and everything so we know that was going to happen there is that again there's there's set photos of a scene where sandman's daughter and the mother come to confront flint marco and to kind of talk him down um so that was probably another, ver- another version of that uh yeah that's why this has the most fascinating production out of all three that's so yeah I mean, I, I, I appreciate them clapping him and, you know, cheering him on, but why are the police and firemen doing it? Like, <laughs> I know he's a superhero, but do your fucking job. Try <laughs> 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 doing your best to get her down to safety. <laughs> Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. That was an ad lib. Oh, was it? <laughs> Talking about. Apparently, um, the the teeth that's over Grace. Oh, this bit. Yeah, go on. Just gonna say this bit here looks like some really weird fan fiction going yeah. on when he laughs. <laughs> um, Fifty. <laughs> so this the the teeth, the false teeth that Topher Grace wore, apparently massively bruised his gums, and he had to have uh, treatment for it afterwards. Oh. Um, but funnily enough, here coming up when. Uh, when the venom face goes back on and he turns around there is about a half a second shot of the prototype venom that was going to be used uh and it it's got bigger eyes and a bigger jaw um i believe it was going to be animatronic because there were animatronic venom tests done for this and uh, a fragment of that is in this it's yeah, half a second it's a, bit a point, it's a bit of a continuity error here. when he's got the mask down if you look at his shoulders and his neck, no clothes. But when he's pulled out of it, he's got the clothes he was wearing. Back oh on. yeah, <laughs> very true. Yeah, that when Peter yeah. <laughs> when Peter grabs him there and he turns around at Peter, that is the older design of Venom that was going to be used because it's got ev- everything is is different on his face. And of course, was this like? Second or third highest grossing film of two thousand and seven. I don't. I don't know. Um, is it? I think, I think number one was Pirates of the Caribbean three. Oh, I. Number two. Number two might have been the fifth Harry Potter film. This might have come number three. Was Shrek the third on there at any point? Because uh, it got, this was higher than uh, Shrek the third. Thank. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of um, third films in 2007, I remember. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is very true. And yeah. a, lot of them were, a lot of them were considered disappointments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, uh, Sh- and of course Shrek 2 was released the same year as Spider-Man 2. And uh, was, yeah. Shrek 4 was going to be released the same year as Spider-Man 4. What a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> So these kids in a minute, um, oh, I think it actually it's a bit later on actually, um, but the kids that are like awesome, wicked cool, um, those are Sam Raimi's kids, wow, and, uh, okay. and the little girl that um, Jameson has that little interaction with, that's Sam Raimi's daughter. Nice. Yeah, I don't get just don't get the sandman here why is he trying to kill him <laughs> like i thought that you're doing this for your daughter yeah just, I know. All, I, all i have left is my daughter you know so i was totally trying to crush you to pieces and again maybe that original <laughs> ending <laughs> would have been better right like when they go and talk <laughs> him down that might have been a better resolution for him i don't know it's it's just It's pretty brutal, though. It's pretty... You feel the pain. Smashy, smashy. Smashy, smashy. <laughs> like, the stakes are really high here, I think. And you feel it. First had a crowd. Had a crowd, all those news reporter reactions. Oh, yeah. It could be the Spider- end of Spider-Man. Tune in next week to find out if the Sandman really will fill Spider-Man's boots with sand <laughs> and make him a <laughs> How will he get out of this one? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty epic though. I love the, the goblin theme coming in in a minute as well. 
and all of the <laughs> and I think this is a uh, uh, yeah there's Sam Raimi kids um, uh, I think the uh, the fact that Harry does this is such a I think it's a brilliant wrap up to his arc over these three films um in the first one he was living in the shadow of his father and the second one he was trying to be his father and now he's not only he's becoming he's and his exactly father. he's risen above his father's hate he's uh, a a better think, person again i don't think, i don't think he needed to die like he didn't no, kill anyone yeah i don't and that, that the fact that he did die you know, it tells me that i think maybe Raimi and co maybe knew that this was the end Maybe in the, Maybe, in the back yeah. of their minds knew that this was the end. Mm-hmm. Because I know, um... Um, I mean, there is symbolism in it, because he's impaled by his own glider, like his yeah. dad. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, that's really cool, the fact that his arm turns to glass. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what happens yeah. to Stan when you heat it yeah. up. If <laughs> Minecraft has taught me anything, god damn it, that's so... <laughs> so that's Sam Raimi's daughter, then? Yes, uh, it's... Uh, Lorne? No. Emma Raimi, I think, is her name. Uh, uh, yeah. Two bucks to Jameson is probably, like, pocket money. <laughs> And that's the last we see of Jameson in this franchise. Until... Until... I am a folk Spider-Man to Yeah, fart. until... Until far from home, yeah. He killed the greatest hero of the rest of the I mean, it's uh, a lot of the screams from um, MJ there are, are recycled from the first two. Probably because she was sick of screaming. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they clearly both... Yeah, it's two best friends going after the girl they yeah. love, literally. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. I just... I think um, I think this whole thing with Harry is a really lovely wrap-up to the arc. Um, I've always, I've always <laughs> thought that. Because it, it just... Like you said earlier, he's risen... He's finally risen above his father's hate. He's become better than his father ever was. He's not just lived up to him. He's, he's become way better. I think that's a really great wrap-up. <laughs> Yeah, killing him off just feels really cheap to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't mind it, but yeah. I think there's there's great transitions between CGI and live action here as well. Um, earlier on, when um, he swung in and kind of got smashed by Sandman and stood up on the railing and stuff, that was a really clean transition from CG to stunt double. <laughs> yeah, I spoke about last time I had this playset as a kid, this... Uh, construction site place yeah it was I was the Argos and Toys R Us yeah yeah. yeah and yeah um, it's a shame Sam Raimi didn't do a Venom film I know mm. he doesn't like the character but he could have really upped the horror aspect of it particularly here oh, it yeah. does show the potential of the, the screech and you're not knowing where he is and him coming from the top grabbing I, I, him I loved the bit earlier when the um, symbiote first got on him and you see the the shadow of it on the wall uh, and it turns to a hand and stuff. Really creepy stuff. Great stuff. And I know when he went over Grace, put on the suit, he, um, he apparently didn't drink anything for a whole day oh, because yeah. if he did, he'd have to go to the toilet and take the whole exactly, thing off. Yeah. Looks uncomfortable as well because that, that one tendril there is like holding up his eyebrow. And it's like pulling it up. (laughs) 
God, Harry gets smashed in the head so much in this film. <laughs> is that his weak comics as well? Loud noises and vibrations. I thought you were talking about Harry then. I thought you were going to say is that his weakness in the I'm comics sorry, head. <laughs> yeah, I meant that. No, yeah. Um, again, uh, in a lot of versions it is, in a lot of versions it isn't. Um, I, I know fire can sometimes be its weakness, like zombies almost. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah. the, the sound, sound waves usually have it have an impact, yeah. And Venom can be defeated by removing the head or destroying the yeah. brain. Oh, go for the head. Oh, the head! Ah! Cause an avalanche with that scream. <laughs> So there's a bit cut here as well where um, Venom was going to be defeated by this huge uh, kind of container of poles being poured down onto the floor and that the noise of that were killing. And um, you can... And there's a, there's a bit where when Eddie blows up, there's footage of uh, a skull that they made where it's like uh, his skull had been kind of converted into into the Venom skull. So it, it, it like the... Uh, the symbiote had, like fully bonded to him, and his skull was shaped like like venom and stuff. It was really creepy. Yeah, and that sound it makes there. Oh, it's it's, cool. nice, cre- oh, it's 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 so very cool. <laughs> and um, I think fans might not have been as pissed if, say, they had Venom escape, but no, they clearly kill him yeah. off here. <laughs> what is it with these Spider-Man villains committing suicide? <laughs> Every one of them, apart from Sandman, has done that. So yeah, <clears throat> this scene is for me where the Uncle Ben thing kind of becomes justified, because um, I just this whole thing of the whole thing is about forgiving yourself, and I think what more is has Peter got to forgive himself than uh, than the than the Uncle Ben thing, and I just I don't know it just works for me, and I really like how these two actors play it. Yeah. I don't buy it where he says, I didn't want this. But clearly loving Bastion yeah. Spider-Man to a pulp. <laughs> what? Uh, Cliff Robinson, Robertson's a great sport for coming back and doing this, though. Obviously, it was yeah, last so role. Last... Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Spider-Man 4 did come out, would they have used him again? Maybe. Maybe not. Because if this is him kind of letting that go maybe because because it's not for me it's not saying that he's going to be it's not saying that he's not ever going to think about uncle ben again but it's saying that he's going <laughs> to let go of that blame of, of blaming himself and it's just that that night will always be with him but and and the lessons that his uncle taught him will always be there but it's not going to be his own fault anymore and he's finally sort of forgiven himself for that. And I think the music's gorgeous. And Toby plays it so well. Yeah. Just where is Sandman going when he disappears into a sandstorm? Yes. Is he just probably going to steal? Yeah. Steal from... <laughs> it's best not to think about that. Because otherwise you go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So what other endings did they have in mind for the Sandman? So one of them, like I said, was going to be him, his uh, wife and daughter coming to the battle and talking him down. Another was probably going to be him just dying there and then with the sand. 
Um, I, d- I don't know what other ones there were. Um, that that information hasn't been released, but yeah. The, the, it's... Again, I just want to see more of the deleted footage because it's just so much of it. Maybe one day. Pardon? Release the. Maybe one day we'll get it. Release the Raimi cut. Well, there is a release the Raimi cut campaign. Funnily enough. Um, and I don't really like that term because it will never be Raimi's cut because he never wanted to do Venom but I would like to see another we've already had the editor's cut let's just get a longer version let's just get more footage is always better yeah that bit there where he just Toby just sort of sighs to himself and it's just like letting all that go I think that just that makes it all worth it for me and that's why I love the whole forgiveness arc funnily enough this film it doesn't end with you know Spider-Man swinging through the city yeah. as if to say onto the next adventure it's a very downbeat I, ending uh, yeah. and particularly the end unfortunately yeah I, I absolutely love the ending to this film because it's um you know, both of these. Well, I, I guess Harry's dying. We'll, we'll talk about it more when we get when we get to the the dance scene. But um, but yeah, I do love the ending and this. Here, here we got another meme face coming up here with Toby. Mm-hmm. My very best best friend. <laughs> Super. <laughs> <laughs> super friends <laughs> welcome super friend <laughs> um yeah Beautiful. get used to this. yeah beautiful shot though beautiful yeah, shot there the sun rises yeah and the funeral I, I love the the at uh, the funeral flashes there. It's, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't have to put him in there, he doesn't speak, but Flash Thompson is there from the first film and I just I like that. Okay. You can see him when he I think when MJ walks away. Again, why is Gwen Stacy? I don't there? know why she's there at all. <laughs> well, <it's>, why? <laughs> The butler should have said, I failed you. You trusted yeah. me. <laughs> I've buried enough members of the Osborne family. <laughs> and those, the final words spoken by this Peter Parker for now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of a more fitting ending. And uh, this. Um, <clears throat> This dance scene is always. I do like this. Um, yeah, go on. I was just gonna say this through with love. It's such a great contrast yeah. to her first song. She said, "Falling in love is wonderful." Now she's through yeah. with it because of everything she's gone through in this film. Yeah, it's great. And this whole thing, um, this, they, I, this has always stuck with me because it, it's two people who have done bad things to each other. They've done terrible things to each other terrible things have happened and they they mm. don't know if the, if things are going to be great in the future but this whole thing where he reaches out his hand and she grabs it and they embrace it's just like nothing else matters it's just the only thing that matters is that these two have got each other and there will be hardships in the future and things bad things have happened and bad things will happen but for this one moment they've just got each other and they're, they're mm-hmm. forgiving each other, and I love that. I was a bit like uh, Millhouse when I saw this. I was like, "When are they gonna get married? Yeah. <laughs> when are they gonna get the marriage?" Because yeah. <laughs> just felt like the natural progression for them. Yeah. So it did throw me off a bit. But it ended on such a downbeat note because I remember as a kid watching the first two yeah. films, always punching the air whenever it happened, and this was like. This is sad. I think there's a lot of hope to it, though. Like that, it, it, it's sort of like, like I said, just we don't know what will happen in the future, but we'll go through it together. 
and I, I just love that whole. It it's ballsy again. I can, I I d- would describe this film as ballsy, and it takes risks. And I a good example of that is is ending your big budget blockbuster superhero film not on a triumphant final swing, but on a slow dance between two broken people. That's great. I, yeah, I just think it's it's just nice. <laughs> Yeah. That was Spider Man three. For me it's still it's still the weakest of the three and um for me I don't think it's brilliant because it's still very messy for me, but I don't think it's like the worst thing ever ever. It's just like um it's just quite a, it's an entertaining muddled mess that has got it has got ambition and ideas to continue the story. It just doesn't fully commit to them because it's just so overstuffed. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, it's it, it's definitely the weakest of the three, and I don't think I, I you know, I, I I don't think that's up for debate. It's definitely the weakest of the three. But every time I watch it, um, I, I I like it even more, and I kind of appreciate what it's doing. It's definitely not as bad as everyone says it is. It is. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a lot smarter than I think everyone says it is. Funnily enough, I think it. it, it it's because um, because a lot of people go, oh, it's so dumb, the dancing and everything. What did they think they were doing? And I, I, I think it knows what it's doing. It, it's not a case of it being incompetent, and it's a very well-made film. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I find the cinematography for it. It's very uh, kind of inky oh, it's black, gorgeous, yeah. but. Yeah, because we've got because we've got Venom in this, it does make sense. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, the actress that's playing Ms. Marvel in the MCU, the the top review of this on Letterboxd is from her, and she rated she she rated it I think four out of five, and she put unironically great. <laughs> so um so yeah no it's um I need to check out. Shifrilis's video on this saying why it's his favourite of the trilogy. I, I, That'd be an yeah. interesting. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I need to check that as well. High Top Films video on this was was great. Um, he really gave me a new appreci- appreciation for it. And um, this song, this song that's playing now, um, "Signal Fire" by Snow Patrol. The the music video for this is is great because it's um it's it's the band playing at like a school production of the first two films. <laughs> And it's like ki- kids reenacting scenes from the first two films, and it's just a really, uh, it's it's a pretty great music video. Um, we should have had it. Um, pardon? Dresses like a, what we should have had is um, that guy from the first film dresses like a spider, <laughs> looks like a book. We should all just give him one big yeah. hug. <laughs> um, oh god, look at that name, Fran- Francisco X de Jesus. What a name. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Well, family writing staff has one of the weirdest names I've ever seen. Cherry Chiva Pravat Dumrong. Oh wrong. yeah, that guy. <laughs> it's a woman. Oh, is it? Oh, Christ! Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know. Yeah, Cherry Chiva Pravat Dumrong. Yeah, it's a woman. No. Um, it's so weird because on the um, credits where they credit producers and writers all of them are so small that takes up like the whole screen <laughs> yeah. um yeah i mean you you uh, i think people can ha- hate this film but you can't deny the the work that went into it um because it is pretty yeah. hero- <laughs> heroic feats to bring it to life um and it, as i say the production on it is fascinating and because it, it was such a mess and it was so rushed and there's such a workload and to be honest, it's a miracle that it turned out like this. Um, That's true, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely an odd one, but one that I appreciate more every time, and I can't call it bad. Definitely can't call it bad. Yeah, I'd go through a phase where I called this god awful, no redeeming qualities whatsoever, but mm. um, I've, got, I've calmed it and grown up a bit, but yeah. um, yeah, for me, it's just okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. Um, yeah, it's just... It is an odd film, but I'm glad it's getting... Uh, it, it, people are cutting it some slack a bit more. Because, uh, it yeah. used, like you say, it used to be just unfairly, you know, bashed to high heaven. Like you say, it was put on the 50th worst movie ever made. Yeah, that's just 
it's fiftieth worst film ever. Uh, made. There's so much worse out there than this. This is like that's not even yeah. up for debate. Uh, uh, wasn't Batman and Robin number one on that same list? Yeah, I think uh, it was. Well. So, yeah, there you go. But just like picking, like picking the obvious choices for bad. I was going to say it's obvious targets, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah. um but yeah. So that was the the ever controversial always interesting Spider-Man 3. Uh what will we be doing? What will we be doing it next time? We will be continuing our Spider-Man commentaries with the amazing Spider-Man. Yes, indeed. Uh, look forward to that one. Uh in the meantime go subscribe to Isaac's channel. I really hope you enjoyed the commentary. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.